The Steamer Soccer. Tonight, live from the Forum in Inglewood, California, the St. Louis Steamers take on the Los Angeles Lasers. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Budweiser, the king of beers and proud sponsor of the United States Olympic team. For all you do, these buds for you. Buy Schnucks, the friendliest stores in town. At Schnucks, we do our best for you. By the people at McDonald's, St. Louis, and Metro East. And by Kuppenheimer's. Buy suits, sports coats, and slacks direct from the manufacturer. At Kuppenheimer's, a real factory store. It's a vitally important road game for the St. Louis Steamers tonight at the L.A. Forum against the Lasers. The two clubs are fighting for position in the Western Division of the MISL playoff race. Good evening, Bob Carpenter along with Bob Kehoe. Coach, this is a very important game for the guys. If they want to finish first, they actually have to win the game, as well as the two to follow. Wichita is a half game ahead. They've only got two to play, one at home. Well, you know, it's the old cliches. Uh, the cards are all on the table. White knuckle time. But I can't help but think that the Steamers will come out, Bob. They're going to play this game maybe with a little more enthusiasm than normally, but they're professionals. They're going to put as much into this game as they put in any other game. And I look for them to just come back and just forget about the injury to Daryl Duran, the fact that they're playing without him. Uh, look for the reserves, such as Larry Hulser, such as Michael Mara. They'll fill in. I look for them to come back as the cards are down, the chips are down, and they'll come through. I'm looking for a good game out of them. Coming off a tough loss at home against the Kansas City Comets on Saturday night, Don Ebert is one of the Steamers leading scorers this year. He leads along with someone else on the roster, Ricky Davis, the game-winning goal statistic with four on the air, a chance to talk with Don before the game tonight. Don Ebert had an overtime goal here in L.A. to win a game for the Steamers earlier this season. Don, I know that there's a lot of pressure concerned uh, with what's going on with this road trip. You almost have to win both games before you come back home. Oh, that's to say the least, Bob. I think Saturday night's defeat was very disheartening for the boys. I thought we played really well. Everybody was looking forward to, you know, playing KC at home. We had the big crowd. And, you know, losing that game took a lot of starch out of us. And like you said, put a lot of extra meaning on these two games. And uh, we're playing a hot L.A. club. You know, they've been playing very well, especially at home. And uh, with Wichita winning last night, we have to win. And I just hope that we come out with the right attitude. And, uh, you know, this is the type of year that uh, everything's on the line. There's no laying down. You only got three games left. You got to give everything you got because they mean so much for the, the whole organization. We've been watching you very closely lately. You look 100% physically fit for the for really the first time this year, and you're running well off the ball and with the ball. I feel a lot better. I, uh, you know, like you say, the nagging injuries haven't bothered me. I've lost a little weight. I, uh, I feel good. I feel like I'm just starting around in shape. Uh, it's been a while since I've been able to play a game, train all week, and play a game and train all week. You know, I usually just play a game. A couple months ago, I'd play a game, sit out for three or four days to get healthy again and play the next game. But now that I can train every day and, uh, you know, the nagging injuries aren't there, I feel 100% better. And uh, I like to start putting the ball in the net. You know, I, I think i got to pick up my goal production, especially now, because, uh, you know, uh, this is the time of year that uh, we got to start scoring more goals. The three goals a game like we did in KC is not going to win anything for us. And I know that, and I know a lot of pressure is on me to score goals. And that's probably the one part of the game I want to pick up. You know, you can do all your running, but i got to put the ball in the back. Don, thanks for the visit, and good luck tonight. Thanks, Bob. And Dave Clemens, the coach of the Steamers, has some adjustments to make tonight. Dave, with Daryl Duran out of the lineup, how does that affect what happens at midfield? Well, if Tony Ebert scores four goals, it'll help the midfield situation <laughs> tremendously. Um, we're going to just slip Larry Hulser in there. Larry's been waiting in the wings now that he's got himself uh, pretty well fit. We've had Ty Keogh, Duncan McEwen, and Daryl Duran playing very well, so it's been a little bit difficult to get Larry back in there. But this is his opportunity, and, uh, you know, a fit and trim and ready-to-go Larry Hulser is just one heck of a player. Dave, uh, I know that Michael Mira is on the trip in place of Daryl Duran on the roster. He's worked very well at times this year with Jeff Cacciatore, and L.A.'s that kind of team, very quick in stealing the ball and pressurizing. There's no question. Young Mike has done extremely well. Uh, a couple of months ago there, we brought him in. He provided a tremendous spark for us, and I think he revitalizes for the stretch run. Um, he slipped off a little bit as the games wore on, and other teams started to counter him a little more because he was being successful. But uh, I think he's ready to come in and do a job for us, just like Redmond Lane has done lately. And as you say, Catch has been a, a catalyst for several different players. So I expect a lot from, uh, from that line once we get it out there. I know there was some talk about Slobo being tired and things like that, but you guys really haven't played that many games in a short stretch as of late, so you'd consider him and the defense well-rested at this point? Oh, I don't think there's anything in Slobo's game that would, would uh, dictate that we leave him out. 
a goalkeeper as of today with less than four goals against average and leading the league, sure, now and then we're going to lose a game, now and then he's going to make a couple of mistakes. But you've got to look at the overall picture as well. And you also got to look at the day-to-day -day picture. I see him every day. And like every player we have, Bill Jennings and myself have to gauge and judge just how they are emotionally, physically, mentally. Uh, and there's no question, Slobo is, is uh, you know, there's no reason to leave him out right now. Dave, and finally, as we wrap things up here, in regard to the total defense, it looks like the Steamers are going to lead the league in that department as far as goals given up again. Stats are sometimes a little bit misleading. We have, there's no doubt, a very, very strong defense, but it's only helped out by the rest of the team and the rest of the players. In this particular game, I believe when we don't have the ball, everybody's a defender. And I believe, conversely, that when we do have it, everybody's an offensive player. So uh, I think that's a tribute to the whole team, how well the defense is done. The defense will have to do very well tonight. The Steamers are only 8-14 and 14 on the road this year. That's the reason they have not clinched the Western Division title up to this point. Bob, as someone who has coached professionally, your thoughts on why it is so difficult to win away from home? Well, as we said before, Bob, just in a brief conversation, I don't think it's so much to do with the visiting team as it is the home team. Their allegiance, their loyalty, their love to the fans, uh, they are wanting to satisfy these people, gets them hyped up. And then, of course, uh, the reaction of the fans spurs them on, much as we have, like, at home when, when St. Louis Steamers play. Uh, the fans mean so much to the home team. They give them that extra momentum, that extra incentive. It's worth a goal, at least. Should be a good one tonight here at the L.A. Forum. We're glad you're with us here for Steamer Soccer against the L.A. Lasers. L.A. and Kansas City two and a half games behind Wichita. The Steamer's a half game back going into the action tonight. And from the L.A. Forum, this is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. Time. It takes a lot of it to brew a beer worthy of the name the King of Beers. Time to select the choicest ingredients. Time for beechwood aging. And over a hundred years of brewing experience. All to make sure that distinctively clean, crisp taste of Budweiser comes through. Time after time after time. Somebody still cares about quality. Push them, twist them, <laughs> bend them, snap them on, and then extend them. Pop points. Sound like fun. <laughs> make a marsh and make a ship. Pop, rip, crinkle, zip. Pop points. Ah. Sound like fun. Stretch them, snap them, overlap them. Never know just what'll happen. Pop points. <laughs> happy meal. <laughs> Get three Pop Points pieces in every McDonald's Happy Meal. Pop points. Happy Meal McDonald's and you. At Schnucks Photo Center, we know you want your pictures back in a hurry. So we make this one simple promise. We'll give you clear, sharp pictures on quality Kodak paper in just one day. Or you'll get your pictures absolutely free. And we keep our promise seven days a week. The colorful prints you like to see when you want to see them in one day. Every day at Schnucks Photo Center. It's simple, convenient photo service from Schnucks, the friendliest stores in town. Watch out when you open a loaf of colonial bread. Because it's a jungle in there. There's a wild animal card in every loaf. Start collecting all 35. Then, want to meet the real thing? You could win a trip for four to Florida's Bush Gardens. Just enter Colonial Zoofari sweepstakes. Look for specially marked packages of Colonial and get a taste for the wildlife. Colonial bread. we got the best right here. Carpenter along with Bob Kehoe back at the Forum in L.A. The teams are coming out on the field. Steamers are already there. The Lasers of L.A. are gathering on Fan Appreciation Night. The only problem is there aren't too many fans here to appreciate. They're averaging not very much here this year in terms of attendance, but they are headed for the playoffs as we take a look at some of the standings in the Major Indoor Soccer League at this time. First of all, in the Eastern Division, Baltimore, all you can say really is the cream has risen to the top. Kenny Cooper's team, all kinds of problems with a slow start. They've got the best team personnel-wise in the league. Everybody knows that. And they are at the top, three games ahead of Pittsburgh, three and a half ahead of Cleveland. New York clinching a playoff spot yesterday as they knocked off Memphis 9-2. The chances are gone for Kyle Roach's Memphis American team. Buffalo's been out of it for quite a while, even though they did knock off some people over the weekend and beat the Steamers two weeks ago. 
In the Western Division, it's a dogfight. We know who's going to be in the playoffs. The top four teams, Wichita, St. Louis, Kansas City, and L.A. Tacoma, after a great rush at midseason and late in the season, didn't quite make it. Phoenix has been out of it for a couple of weeks. Steamers a half game behind, but with a game in hand, but they cannot tie Wichita. That will not be good enough. They've got to finish a game ahead of Wichita to get first place. So really, the Steamers are a game and a half away from the MISL Western Division title. KC and LA two and a half back. This is a very important game for the Lasers tonight. They've got two games in hand over the Comets of Kansas City. Now at the Forum, it's time for our national anthem. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? I'll tell you what, that guy ought to be a sportscaster with that voice. He put us out of work real quick, Mr. Kehoe. Hey, he, he had some volume and some depth, didn't he? I, I loved it. He's in, he's got these people on their feet. They're kicking balls up into the stands here on Fan Appreciation Night. By the way, we'll have Fan Appreciation Night at the arena on Saturday when the Steamers host these L.A. Lasers. A free photo album containing action shots of each Steamer player will be given to everyone attending the game. Fan Appreciation Night Saturday, the Steamers and the Lasers. Game time is 7.35 at the St. Louis Arena. What a great crowd on Saturday, but the guys couldn't pull off a victory in front of all those folks. We had 17,395 and a very damaging loss to the Comets of Kansas City. And it's anybody's guess who's going to finish first, second, third, and fourth in the West, Bob. But right now, I would have to say, and I'm not being pessimistic or anything, so Steamer fans shouldn't think that. But when you look at the way things have gone lately, it looks like St. Louis is going to have a very difficult time overtaking Wichita because a tie goes to the wings because of the goal differential. Exactly. I mean, let's not ever let this fact escape us either that Wichita is an excellent team. Uh, and again, like you say, I don't want to be negative about it either. But uh, I would say that Wichita has a better chance right at this given point in time than we do. They play Phoenix at home and away and L.A. at home on Thursday night. And they've got to play three games in about five days. We've kicked it off. Steamers in their road blues going from right to left. Carl Rose for Sammy Bick on the near boards. Batata watching him. Sammy tries to knock it in, then heads it past Batata. Down the wing he goes, deflected up into the crowd by defender Alan Kelly, who was our star of the game here last time when the Lasers hammered the Steamers. That was the end of a two-game road trip that we would just as soon forget to Phoenix and Los Angeles. Duncan McEwen will take the free kick on the left side. Ricky Davis and Don Ebert in front for St. Louis. Their goalkeeper. Looks like Kirk Shermer. Mr. Mahoney is not in there. He's played very well against St. Louis this year. Ricky Davis in front. A bad angle shot as he was turning away from the net. And Don Ebert just couldn't reach it and deflect it into the net. So Shermer brings it out. All the way up to the red line. He goes right side. Controlled there along the boards by L.A.'s number 17, Gus Michaelis. He gives it back in midfield on defense for Alan Kelly, who dumps it over on the far board. Mark Lindsay's been tough on the Steamers this year. He dumps it back to Kelly. Mark Lindsay against the Steamers, two of his nine against the Steamers. He had both of those in one contest at the arena. Kirk Shermer with it, 22. He's 6'4", 185, 23 years old, an American. Slobo, of course, at the other end for St. Louis. Nice deal by Sammy Bick. The net is empty. Right side, Ricky Davis shooting, and he put it way into the crowd. They had the goalkeeper way out of there, and Davis couldn't get over the ball enough and put it up into the crowd. It'll be a goal kick for L.A. Slobo comes into the game, making his 38th start. He's played 2,160 minutes coming in, Slobo has. He's allowed 131 goals. He's 20 and 15 with the goals against a 3.64. He was the first keeper in the league to win 20 games this year. He's 20 and 15. Kirk Shermer at the other end. 
has appeared in only eight games for 306 minutes. He's three and five of the goals against of 8.82. So statistically, the Steamers have the edge in goal, but that's usually the case with Slobo in there. And Shermer gets the goal kick back from a defender. He's got Clyde Best in front of him, as well as Nathan Sachs, a big physical kid. Out to midfield, they dump it. Duncan McEwen on the near boards, brought down hard there. On a check from behind by Jimmy Millinder, it'll be a St. Louis free kick at the midfield strike. Referee, the senior official, Jeff Mantell. Toros Kabrichin working with him. Mantell was telling us before the game, he's done about seven games in the last seven nights. I thought we had bad travel schedules. The officials have really been getting around. Another St. Louis free kick down the left wing. McEwen, Millinder in front of him defending. Ebert and Davis in front. They dump it easily off the boards, and Donnie couldn't get an angle on it. And Shermer picked it up. Minute and a half in. We're scoreless. Neil Cohen kicks the ball away from his man in midfield. Then Ricky Davis is shoved down. I talked about big Nathan Sachs a minute ago, a big physical player. But he gave Ricky a shove right there at the red line. Came in with the foot high, Bob. You can't, you can't show the bottom of that shoe to the, to the player who's trying to control the ball. Davis turning, centers it. McEwen, a shot and a goal. Ricky Davis out of the corner, brought it out, and centered it to McEwen, who is steaming down the slot. And Duncan puts the steamers ahead, only a minute 37 seconds into the game. Ricky Davis controlling the ball very well, comes in, looks up, sees McEwen coming in, feeds it right on his shoe, and there it goes. Excellent. Nice run by Duncan McEwen. He really came in on the play very well. 13th goal of the year for Duncan McEwen. 17th assist of the Saint year Lewis for Ricky Davis. Five, and the Steamers on that combo take the lead at a minute 37 eight, seconds up the first goal, quarter. And goodness, it's seven. good to start with a goal on the road. Lewis goal by it's good to start with a goal anywhere. Lasers kick it off. Back on defense. It goes to Beto. On the near side, let's check that's Beto. I haven't seen these L.A. names in a while, so it takes some getting used to. Ahead, Michaelis, left side, taken away, and a nice play by Tony Bellinger, and Timmy Walters gave it back to Slobo. On the far side, Slobo throws it up for Walters. Timmy along the far boards, cuts it inside against Beto, racing to the L.A. red line. Nice move down the right side for Pesa. Diego was at a bad angle in the corner, and Alan Kelly made the good defensive play. On the far side, Nathan Sachs against Ty Keogh. Ty is playing his best soccer of the year. Left side, Alan Kelly overlapping a chance to center. It does. Kicked away by Bellinger. They were trying to find their man, Stuart Lee, hanging around that penalty box. Also, Poli Garcia was in there. Now Beto on the near side for Garcia. Dumps it back to Michaelis. At midfield for Alan Kelly. Kelly down to Stuart Lee, the MISL player of the week. Tries to center it. Bellinger knocks him off the ball. Now it's Kelly overlapping to the left wing corner. Garcia a touch on it. Cohen a whack at it. Garcia got it back. Neal knocks it away. Kelly around the boards in front, and it came by at a bad angle. On the near boards, it's a battle between Walters and Beto. Pesa against Michaelis at the red line. It'll be an L.A. free kick on a St. Louis foul. Stuart Lee. Six goals and three assists in a four-day span last week, including a game-winning goal and a hat trick. In front, pass, and Neil Cohen knocks it off the boards as it was dumped out there by Poli Garcia. Lee currently having the best year of his career, 30 goals, 19 assists, third best in the club. What a great week he's had. Well, Coach, what have you seen so far that has impressed you or the other way? Well, I'm, I'm impressed so far. I don't want to be too optimistic because we're so very early on into the game. But the Steamers are playing with a lot of life, a lot of them vigor and vitality. They're very eager and anxious and are making good runs off the ball. Witness McEwen's first goal by moving into a great space and taking the feed from Davis. So we're moving around real well and we're playing well defensively so far. Interception in front after Carl Rose failed to clear. Oh, a header was fanned on in front. Mark Lindsay just couldn't get tall enough for a head ball, and that might have been an L.A. goal as Sammy Bick, the team captain, peruses the situation. By the way, Peter Wall, the coach of the L.A. Lasers, has not at his disposal two of his better players tonight, Don Toman, a flashy forward who wears white shoes. <laughs> He's a fancy player. And one of their very talented defenders, Lee Cornwell, who killed the Steamers last time here. They both have knee sprains, will be out. He said Cornwell could play tonight, but he probably will bring him back Saturday night in St. Louis. Up over the top, Carl Rose beaten, and Slobo punches it up into the crowd. They got one up over the top of Carl, and Batata hit the ball, and Slobo punched it away. L.A. corner kick will take a timeout. 11.24 left, first quarter. The Steamers on top, 1-0. This is St. Louis Steamer soccer. Herbert and I have been happy together for 35 years. Then suddenly last night, 
have it kick the bucket. People everywhere are kicking the bucket for the great taste of Church's fried chicken. That's because Church's chicken is big, bigger than Kentucky Fried. And you always get Church's tender, juicy, quality chicken at a deliciously low price. Mmm, Church's chicken is delicious. You should have kicked the bucket years ago. Tell someone you know to kick the bucket and come to churches. Corner kick, L.A., right wing. Mark Lindsay, the trigger man, centers it. Carl Rose knocked it away. Lindsay picks it up on the near board, tries to cut it around to the corner against Ebert, and does a shot. And Slobo, the near post save, as he punched it down as it was approaching those boards. Slobo, a rare long throw down the right side. Ebert racing against Sachs, tried to cut it inside. Sachs dumped him. Play on, says Jeff Mantell. Keogh gets it, dumps it in the corner. Donnie Ebert against Clyde Best. Big Daddy checking him down. It goes through to the goalkeeper. Don Ebert finding himself among some big boys in there. Nathan Sachs, 6'1", 175, and Clyde Best, 6'1", 195. Ebert goes 6 feet, 170. On the near side, Garcia took a long ball from Sachs at the red line. Carl Rose watching him to his right. To the corner now, he got away from Carl. Sammy Bick supports. Ricky Davis knocks it out of there as they were being pressured in front by Willie Milano. Up the left wing, it goes for Ebert. Too short, and Best cuts it off. Donnie tries to knock him off the ball. A good job, dude. Distract him enough where Ty Keogh could make the steal, and now Garcia comes up with it in midfield. Three on three for L.A., cuts it inside. Garcia centers and scores! Oh, what a great move. The Steamers thought he was going to dump it on the left side for Jimmy Millinder. Instead, he towed it with his right foot right past Slobo, and we're tied 1-1. Four minutes and 39 seconds in. Ty made his bid for the ball with a sliding tackle and couldn't quite come up with it right there. He went right on through and with the outside of the right foot just flicked it into the back of the net right past the oncoming Slobo. Not a whole lot could be done about it. Ty could see he was moving into the open space. He had to get onto the ball, just couldn't make the right contact. So we're tied up 1-1. Mark right, Garcia really had a choice, too. If he would have dumped it over to Millinder, he might have had an empty net. So either way, it looked like L.A. was going to score. For Bully Garcia... It is his 37th goal of the year. He made an outstanding move, didn't he? Yes. He's very quick off the mark. That's what makes him so, so very difficult to mark. He comes at you very controlled and very uh, at a very steady pace, and then suddenly he explodes. Quickly, the steamer's back the other way. Catch a Tory for O'Mara, put up into the crowd by Gus Michaelis. It'll be a St. Louis kick in down the right wing. Garcia's 37th of the year. It's an unassisted goal at 439, and it equalizes things at 1 1. Steamers do first blood at 137. McEwen is 13th from Ricky Davis, his 17th assist. Now Davis will come on with Ebert. The Steamers, you will notice, late in the season and on into the playoffs, will bring on Davis and Ebert for almost every deep in the offensive end dead ball situation. Duncan McEwen's at the point with Bellinger. Timmy Walters operating in front. Steamers only have one defender in there. Through the legs of a defender who tipped it, and Millinder comes up with it for St. Louis, for L.A., rather. On the near side, Millinder got it back to the goalkeeper as we lost our audio there momentarily. Up the far side, Alan Kelly across the midfield stripe. Timmy Walters watching him. Tried to center it. Knocked away there by Ricky Davis. Millinder has his man Michaelis overlapping. Ooh, that one was headed for the far post, and Neil Cohen towed it out. Slobo might have reached the ball, but it was well placed by Michaelis. Top of the penalty area, Batata, the skilled South American player, tried to flick it onto the right side. Far Juan Cardenas, who was taken away by Bellinger. Tony against L Kelly down the right wing. Into the corner, a chance to center. In front, a score! Oh, yes. Timmy Walters! And what a great run by Tony Bellinger. Tony has assists now in five straight games, and that was a great end-to-end -end rush by number six. You're absolutely correct. Tony Bellinger with a superhuman effort. Failed to go down, refused to go down, and stayed onto the ball. Played the rebound perfectly to Timmy Walters. In the back of the net, we're on top again, 2-1. Tony Bellinger certainly to be admired on that play. What, what, well, Walt, Walters scored the goal, but Bellinger is the one that made it. What a great assist by Tony Bellinger, his 12th of the year. Timmy Walters talking to Dave Clemens on the bench, got his 26th goal of the year at 529. We'll take a timeout. Steamers back on top. It's an exciting 2-1 first period at L.A. From the Forum, this is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. Oppenheimer is a real factory store, which means our suits, sport coats, and slacks go direct from our factory to a Kuppenheimer factory store, direct to you. 
That's the only reason Koppenheimer can sell a suit that would cost you $220 in a department store for only $130. But then you'll always find real bargains at Koppenheimer. After all, we're a real factory store. 2-1, St. Louis lead, 9.31 left first quarter. Goals from McEwen and Walters for the Steamers. Coley Garcia for the Lasers. An offensive game so far. Back on defense, Beto. Pressure from Cacciatore. Back to the goalkeeper, Shermer. You really can't blame him for the St. Louis goals. Boy, his defense just left men come in open. Ebert got a piece of it. Beto right side for Batata. Pulled down Cardenas and on goal, a shot wide. And Slobo picked it up off the glass. If he gets it on goal, Slobo might have made the save because I don't think the ball was tall enough to get over him. It got past him to the side, then came right back to him off the glass. Ahead to Bellinger, Tony across the midfield stripe. Watching him, Stuart Lee. Ebert flicks it on right side. Larry Hulser makes his first appearance in midfield. Larry has his right knee taped. He's been suffering from a knee injury this year. Left side, little catch at Torrey against Big Clyde Best. Jeff digging there. Bestie pushes him off the ball and clears it away. Bellinger knocks it down at the point. He battles and trips Stuart Lee. It'll be an L.A. free kick inside the road defensive end, and Tony says, yeah, I know I did it. Doros Kabritchen working the far boards now. Jeff Mantell, the near boards. They switched to run a little bit. Beto at midfield, working against Hulser. Right side, Stuart Lee. Dangerous veteran player here. Nice slide tackle by Tony Bellinger. Cacciatore picks it up. Jeff looking for some support. He's double teamed by Best and Lee. Gave it up to Beto on the near board. Jeff just got a no man's land there. He was surrounded by white shirts. Cacciatore is still digging in there. Beto, I tell you, Jeff, Jeff just ran about five blocks. In the right corner, Michael Mira finally comes back to steal it. Best pushes him down, and somebody give Cacciatore a breather. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. You see Cacciatore against Big Clyde Best, it kind of looked, you know, like a, like a gnat on an elephant. How that guy, had, how he gets in there and mixes it up like that, and he never gets injured. You know, I think Jeff would be a, a great fighter. 5'4", 125, he took on Clyde Best, 6'1", 195. He'd probably get killed, but he put up a fight, wouldn't he? Oh, yes. Slobo, right side, Sammy Bick across the midfield stripe. Sammy ahead down the right boards to O'Mara. Michaela's checking him off the ball. Good defensive play, and then O'Mara had to grab him. It'll be an L.A. free kick in, the own, in their own defensive end. We're 13 seconds away from the midway point in the first quarter of play, and Carl Rose is whistled down for a foul at midfield. Michaelis, free kick. Right side, crowd starting to make some noise here. Maybe 2,000 or so in the building. 2,500s, maybe. Down the right wing boards. Mark Lindsay back to the net against Hulser. Centers it. Sammy Victor to knock it away in front of Slobo. Michael O'Meara cuts it nicely to Carl Rose on the far side. Carl down the boards against O'Meara. Kelly took it away. He's got his man Garcia across the red line against Ty Keo. Garcia top of the area. Left footed shot. Ty got in front of that one and Kelly picks it up on the left point. Feeds it to Michaelis. Redmond Lane making his first appearance watching Gus. Back at midfield. Michaela centers it. Stuart Lee first time pass. Lindsay and a good play by Sammy Bick to cut in front. Back to Slobo. This is a good game, Bob, on the part of both teams. They're both passing it well, and L.A. is really playing their pressure game to perfection. And they're both going for the goal, too. Don Ebert back in midfield. L.A. is pressuring the steamers very nicely at midfield, forcing a lot of long passes and then some steals. Davis left side. Ricky looking to make something happen for Ebert. Arkeo ties got it in front. Ebert, oh, he couldn't get it to him. Centered, and it's knocked away by Lindsay. Oh, brother, they almost got it through for Don Ebert. Here's Mark Lindsay back to midfield. Left side. Feeds it there. Garcia feeds it through for Kelly. Right wing, Carl Rose cleans his clock. Up the near board, Stuart Lee takes a whack at it. It comes back loose to Carl Rose. Nicely done by number two. And Ricky Davis has it across his own red line. Davis at the midfield stripe. Left wing ball, Ebert. Keeper is out of the net. Shermer goes down to knock it away, and Millinder picks it up. Duncan McEwen back on as he replaces Ty Keo. Ebert will leave. Who's coming on? Looks like Diego Pesa. Down the left wing, a hard shot on goal, and Slobo knocked away the left footer from Willie Milano. Sammy Bick with it, volleys it back over the head up into the crowd. He was trying to go down the floor with it. L.A. kick in on the right side with 5.54 remaining in the first quarter. The ball out of play, and the Steamers lead it by a 2-1 score. It was interesting to note on the last uh, attack down the floor by, by uh, L.A., Holy Garcia facing Ty Keo, and again he went at him at, at a controlled pace. 
moved off to his left to get the shot. Same move he made to make the goal. We'll take a quick timeout. Steamers up by one from the Forum in L.A. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. This buds for everyone who scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. Bob Carpenter, Bob Kehoe, subbing for Bob Burnett here at the Forum in L.A. tonight. Steamers lead it 2-1 over the Lasers. At the point, Nathan Sachs takes it off the free kick and feeds it in there. He tried a shot, and Duncan McEwen blocked it. On the near side, a pass for Diego Pesa. He's against Millinder. Pesa, one-on-one, -on -one, is quicker than Millinder. Right side, he goes to McEwen. Ball knocked down. Steamers claiming handball on Nathan Sachs. Referees say play on. Right side, Willie Manalo across the red line. In the middle for Batata. Left corner, running onto it is Sachs. McEwen trying to knock him off the ball. It was Sachs hitting it off the boards right to Neil Cohen. His pass behind Walters, and Best gets it back with help from Sachs at midfield. Jimmy Millinder on the near side. Clock says 5.15 left, first quarter. Nathan Sachs down the left wing boards. Batata turning Neil Cohen there, trying to get him to the corner. Neil gave him a bit of a whack on the leg, and Toros Kabrichin right there to make the call. It'll be a free kick for L.A. Nathan Sachs back in midfield for Clyde Best. Diego Pesa, the man up front, Marking, so they go back to the goalkeeper, Shermer. Plays it up over two lines as he had crossed the red line. Cohen knocks his man down. L.A. had the ball. Cohen knocked Batata down, and they could have let that play continue to the advantage, but, Bob, I guess the official thought it was a serious enough foul. Yeah, well, he's, you know, they've got to make up their mind early how they're going to do it. They're going to let, let them play the advantage, or if he's going to try to control the game and keep the fouls to a minimum and let the players know, hey, we're going to play the ball and not the man. Looks like he elected to do that this time anyway. Yeah, Milano had a chance on the net after that whistle. Down the right wing boards it goes for Millinder. Jimmy took it off the chest after it hit the glass and the boards. Tried to go around Duncan McEwen with it to the right wing corner. Milano there against Tony Bellinger tries to turn it. Bellinger knocks him off the ball and fights his way up the near boards. Milano took it away. Top of the area. Chance for a shot left side. Nathan Sachs, he hit it wide. Rebound fanned on by Milano. Pesa was bothering him from behind. Diego comes down the left wing against Clyde Best. He's two on four with Tim Walters. Dumps it out for Timmy as the steamers change lines. Walters right side shooting, and it's blocked off the glass. Walters a rebound. A couple of touches on it into the crowd off the right foot of Timmy. It'll be a kick in for L.A. St. Louis did a good job that time, Coach. They only had a two-on-four, but Walters and Pesa did a good job to keep the ball in the offensive end. Yeah, I say again, you know, they, they're showing a lot of life, and they're showing a lot of great vision here tonight, too. They're, they're doing a lot of side-to-side -side stuff instead of, the you know, forcing the ball straight ahead. They're looking for the man on the far side of the floor, switching the point of the attack. So I, I, I'm, I'm still high on them, what they're doing here tonight. I, I like it. I like what I see. Kirk Shermer. L.A. goalkeeper, straight ahead. Sammy Bick took it away. Sammy couldn't trap it properly because he was full speed ahead. Beto on the right side, Michaelis. Rolls it all the way up for Cardenas at the top of the penalty area. Got around Carl Rose. A shot slow on the save. Rebound into the crowd. Oh, Beto was staring at an empty net. Ebert and Hulser got in front of him. What a great move there by Cardenas to get around Carl Rose and a good save by Slobo. Ebert, the one that actually punched it up into the crowd. Tell you what, they got some quick little ball players in this team, Bob. You can't let them loose in the penalty area, and they're even tough when they're one on one coming in from the point. And that look, looks like one of the things they're trying to do. They're holding us way out towards the midline, feeding the ball into a one on one situation at the top of the D. Yeah, they're a fast breaking team. Whereas the Wichita Wings, more of a build-up type team with all those veteran players. These guys just keep motoring all the time. They can match up very well with St. Louis. Maybe better than anyone else in the division. Ty Q on the near board. Centers it for Carl Rose to get it out of that defensive end. Carl, ooh, almost had it taken away by Beto. Cardenas picks it up. Right side, Michaelis. One touch into the corner. Poli Garcia against Walters, trying to get an angle on the net. Timmy gets between him and the near post, and now Garcia beats him, centers it, and Beto just missed tipping it in. Cardenas, Beto, shot, save, rebound. Carl Rose picks it up. Oh, brother, we almost got equalized again. Ebert up the far boards. He's knocked down hard by Beto. That'll be a St. Louis free kick. Most physical L.A. foul we've seen to date. Ebert really got tripped up, although Beto did get a piece of the ball on the initial tackle. 
328 left first quarter. Carl Rose. Well, that wasn't a very good free kick right off the foot of a player. Harden is the man that got a piece of it. Garcia dumped it into the attacking zone, and Carl gives it back to Slobo, who's been beaten once. Couldn't fault the goalkeepers for what's happened so far. It's been three op open shots, and Ebert was pushed in midfield by Alan Kelly. Ebert plays it off quickly. Taikio straight ahead for Davis. Michaela shot the gap to take it away in front of him. That's what I talked about earlier. They love to come up and cut off those long passes. Now Sammy Bickestiel in midfield. Back to Slobo. Under three minutes left now. First quarter. Taikio back to Slobo. Dumps it up. It may cross. Oh, what a cross three lines, but Michaela's headed it down, so they waste a chance for a free kick. On the near side, Beto at the midfield stripe. Beto against Taikio. He's got a man in front. Garcia goes left side. Michaelis against Ricky Davis. Ricky trying to knock him off the boards. And Ricky swung the leg right between the legs of Michaelis to get the foul. And they'll make him restart it as Gus cheated a couple of yards in from the boards before taking the free kick. Slams it off the boards on the free kick. Taikio intercepts. Comes loose for Davis. Ricky near side. Donnie Ebert. Got it through the legs of Michaelis in a nice move. Ebert right side for Davis. Ricky cuts in front of Beto. He's got Ty Keo to his right. Alan Kelly one-on-one -on -one defending. Ricky gets up, shoots wide. Ebert the rebound in front, and Kelly luckily knocked it right back to his goalkeeper. That's what you call a little bit of that Alan Kelly luck right there as Ebert and Davis almost made something happen, Bob. And tremendous strength and balance shown by Ricky that time. Unbelievable. Davis is like a rubber ball himself. Did you see he went down and bounced right back up, still maintained possession of the ball and got the shot off at goal. And a pretty good shot as well off the boards that almost set up Ebert for a chance in front. Oh. No comments. <laughs> Thank you. Bueno, mi esposo, él es sweet. Christmas gift in the month of April. Yeah, Larry just, just didn't get enough on the pass back, and Larry made a great present of gifts. I think Carl deflected it by Slobo, too. Well, it's just one of those things. I mean, uh, you make a mistake sometimes. Everybody does it. Unfortunately, it lost our lead for us, but I'm sure Larry feels worse than anybody in this whole building right now. But uh, he'll come back. He's a pro. Tenth goal of the year for Mark Lindsay. Three of them against the Steamers. Time of the goal, 13:41. Gatchatori down the middle. Knocked off the ball. Diego Pesa gets it on the far boards. Bellinger a steal. Shoots it in. Kirk Shermer fails to pick it up. Gatchatori had an angle on it. And a good tackle by Lindsay to knock it away. Gatchatori lost his shoe and thus falls down. Dumps it back to Hulser. Larry Hulser on the left side for Stuart Lee. We understand there's been some technical problems in St. Louis. The game is tied 2-2. We'll show you and we'll repeat the L.A. goal for you folks on radio and TV when we get the opportunity. Down the left side, Timmy Walters. 40 seconds left in the first period. 2-2 game. Walters back to the point for Hulser. Larry right side. Neil Cohen a good run. Centers it beyond Pesa. Clyde Bess off the boards. Hulser open on top. Fakes a shot, takes it through. Pesa didn't pounce right away in the rebound. And I tell you, Kirk Shermer looks very shaky to me, Bob. Shermer is definitely weak back there. I'll tell you, I don't know whether he's nervousness or, or whether, like you said, this is what his eighth game he's of the year. He's only playing his ninth game of the year, so he's not used to handling some of the balls coming off the boards. Yeah, he's very suspect. And you've got to capitalize on that weakness by a goalkeeper. If he can't handle the ball off the boards, that's the name of this game. Five seconds left, balls in the air at midfield. Header by Lindsay. whistle foul on Mark as he dumped Pesa. Steamer is a dead ball situation with three seconds left. Diego trying to cheat a few yards on the free kick, and Torres Cabrician places it back where it belongs. I would say they'll probably try to dump it in there somewhere and try to get a quick shot. Bellinger turning and shooting over the glass, and that's the end of the first quarter of play. A couple of Steamer defensive mistakes have led to L.A. goals, but St. Louis has two of its own. After 15 minutes of play, it's the Steamers and the Lasers all tied up at two apiece. Back with the second quarter in a moment from the Forum. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer.
Consider the solution to your complicated, confusing financial picture. Anheuser-Busch employees credit union in their powerful daily interest fund, Unlimited. The Unlimited, one productive money management package. It's checking. It's a money market fund. It's a line of credit. Plus, with my cue card, I have access to automatic teller machines all over town. Bring it all together in one complete package. The Daily Interest Fund Unlimited. The difference will persuade you. You can't get anything done these days without an appointment. He says he's very sorry, but he can't make it till next week. The dentist says he'll be more than happy to fit you in on the 11th. But if the transmission on your foreign car breaks down, there's no appointment necessary at Amco. He says bring it right over. Amco. Why go anywhere else? Jim Hart for your neighborhood Amco dealer. There are 10 locally owned, independently owned Amco transmission centers in the bi-state area. Look in your yellow pages for the one nearest you. I've loved this river since I was just a kid. But as more people moved in, it was bound to get dirty. So I was glad the town upstream installed a treatment system. Phillips Petroleum developed the plastic that makes it possible. Now, I don't know much about gasoline, but I go to Phillips 66. Because I'm not just buying gasoline. It's like I'm helping keep my river clean. Fine products for you and your car from Phillips Petroleum, the performance company. Tuesday, the Playboy Casino Hotel in Atlantic City comes alive for the USBA Welterweight Championship. Channel 30 brings you all the 12-round excitement live at 9 p.m. WBA number two ranked Marlon Magic Starling with 31 wins, two losses, 20 of those wins by knockout, battles Lupe Aquino, ranked number 10 by the USBA with a 23-1-1 record behind him. The USBA Welterweight Championship, live, Tuesday night at 9, here on KDNL-TV, Channel 30. Buy a strip of tickets and have the same great season. Bob, with only a minute 19 left in the period, the Steamers really gave away a bad goal. Yes, the second Phoenix uh, LA goal was uh, just a simple mistake, uh, a weak pass from Larry Hulser toward the foot of, of the waiting uh, Rose, Carl Rose. The ball never did get there. He put it right onto the foot of the waiting forward and he blasted it by I think it was deflected slightly by Carl Rose yeah. and, and Slobo had already committed himself to the original shot and then when the ball changed directions there wasn't too much he could do about it. So the first quarter scoring summary Duncan McEwen for St. Louis is 13th of the year from Ricky Davis Ricky's 17th assist one nothing St. Louis at 137 LA equalized on Garcia's 37th unassisted at 439 only three minutes and two seconds later and then Timmy Walters a nice goal on a great assist by Tony Bellinger a long run down the right side and a bounce pass off the boards 2-1 St. Louis at 5 29 and then the goal from Lindsay only a minute 19 remaining Mark Lindsay's 10th of the year he's got three of them against the steamers and it's a 2-2 game well, Slobo. Still in it. yeah Dave Clements watching and I just noticed something here at the forum Slobo goes down to the left end to our left there's a group of Lasers fans that sit back there and they really harass the opposing goalkeeper. Slobo had some problems with those guys the last time he was here and asked, I think, for some of them to be moved, not kicked out, just moved because they were, I guess, throwing some things and they're right behind him now and giving him a tough time. Slobo throws it up the left side for Duncan McEwen, rolls it down long, left wing corner. Michaelis beats Ebert to the ball, but it's centered right to Ricky Davis. Ricky has a man, Bick in front, cuts it back to Ebert. Donnie across to Sammy, top of the area, shot wide, rebound. Sammy got to it, L.A. defense fanned Whoa. on it. Off the boards, Davis whacked it. Oh, and Sammy was put hard into the boards by Alan Kelly, and Bick is getting up very slowly. He really got his bell rung that time. No doubt about it. He put him in there deliberately, too. I'm not so sure that wasn't more than just a foul, Coach. He could easily be in the penalty box right now. That was a pretty physical foul as Kelly stepped in front of him. Carl Rose runs over the ball. Davis centers it. Oh, score! Yes. Donnie Ebert beautifully. They sent Carl Rose in as a decoy, and then Davis put it in right behind him. Ebert tips it in. The steamers have the lead for the third time this evening. Great dead ball they situation. Got the fire. Rose goes on the decoy run, creates a little space. Davis rolls it across. Ebert runs into the space. One touch on the ball. Far post. 3 2 steamers. 19th goal of the year for Don Ebert. 18th assist. Second of the night for Ricky Davis. And I think Don and Dave Clemens on the bench are talking about how the dead ball situation worked to perfection. They had some 
dead ball plays hanging on the chalkboard in the locker room before the game, and I think they just showed us one of them. 39 seconds of the second period. St. Louis leads it 3-2. Well, Coach, if we could just keep the lead for the while, for a while, Steamers keep giving up some silly goals, and maybe they can build a two- or three-goal lead here, and they look like they're awfully potent offensively tonight. I'll tell you, both teams look like all they've got in mind is getting the ball in the back of the net. Beto, left side, Michaelis. Tim Walters guarding him. Michaelis looking to center it. Shooting! Slobo the save. He had to go to his left. Michaelis used the defender very nicely as a screen and then bended it around him. And right on goal. Now a long throw from Slobo. Kelly ahead for Beto. Beto watching his men on the left side, Michaelis. Michaelis against Tim Walters. Gus touches it, right wing. Cardenas, number 16, got around Carl Rose to the corner, centers it, nobody there but Walters and Timmy cuts it back to Slobo. Left side, Carl Rose. Slobo's arm must be feeling a lot better because he's really throwing the ball tonight. Putting something on it, too. Yeah, he hasn't thrown the ball throughout the year because of an arm injury. Ellinger chipped it down straight for Pesa, and the L.A. defense ruined his angle on the play and it went all the way through to the goalkeeper. On the near side, Nathan Sachs around Redmond Lane. Batata left side for Mark Lindsay. Redmond watching Sachs with the back of the neutral area again. He puts it over the red line. Ty Keel with a nice chest trap. He's at left side after the steal for Cacciatore. Best knocks it back in, but Bellinger gives it back to Slobo. Some St. Louis folks are here. We'd like to say hello to Mr. and Mrs. Barrick from Demir, who attends Long Beach City College here. And Bill Keogh asked us to say hello to all his friends back in St. Louis. He is Ty Keogh's uncle and Harry Keogh's brother. He's always attending the Steamer games out here on the West Coast. Uh-oh. Tony Bellinger back to Slobo, and Stuart Lee almost cut it off. Come on, guys. We've got to play some defense here. This doesn't look like playoff-bound defense right here. Redmond Lane cuts it in off the boards. Clyde Best was pushing him. Redmond kept his balance. Hulster left side. It was intended for Cohen. Redmond cut it off, and it's back to Bellinger. Tony steps around Batata with a nice move to his right. Bellinger, right point, cuts it inside. Top of the area, pushed down from behind. Oh, I was waiting for the card to come out. He simply pushed Tony from behind, did Batata, and that could have easily been two minutes. See, there's the inconsistency. You know, they're, they're, they're just calling the foul and letting it go. They're not, they're not uh, doing anything about the one who's, making, who's committing the offense. That really looked like a penalty. The other one was a 50-50 call in the corner that we talked about when Bick got hammered, but this one didn't look like much doubt about it. Bellinger puts one into the crowd on a hard shot from a pass by Redmond Lane. We'll take a timeout. 11.52 left in the first half. Steamers have the only goal of the quarter so far and lead the Lasers by a 3 2 score. From the Forum, this is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. Go ahead. Admire this $220 wool blend suit in a department store, but buy it at Kuppenheimer for only $130. Try on this classic $140 blazer at a fine men's shop, but buy it at Kuppenheimer for only $80. Now, there's only one reason Kuppenheimer can sell clothes this good at prices this low. We make them ourselves. You see, Kuppenheimer is a real factory store. Back of the forum, 3-2 St. Louis, 11:52, second quarter. Some Steamer fans asked me after the home game the other night why I call Bob Burnett and Bob Kehoe coach. I'll tell you that when we get a little time. <laughs> I call them some other things off the air, though. I was about to say, if that's all they ever call me, I'll be happy. Neil Cohen dumping on the far side. Don Ebert, a nice steal away from Clyde Best. Two on one with Ricky Davis. Ebert straight down the middle. Davis deflects it in, falls over the keeper, and Shermer did a good job of coming out to grab it. He really risked injury by diving to the feet of Ricky Davis. Ricky just ran out of room along the boards, or else he could have had the Steamers' fourth goal of the night. Ooh, Hulser, a nice move around Batata. He's got Ebert open down the right wing. Donnie across to Davis. Knocked away in front. No, it didn't go in. I thought the defender knocked it back in. Oh, brother, Ebert had a great idea for a pass to Davis, and the defender knocked it away, and Peter Wall wants a timeout. Maybe the goalkeepers call a timeout. He might have been slightly injured on that play before, but I tell you, Peter Wall's team has been under attack here for the last minute, and we'll take a timeout as well. We get 11 minutes and five seconds left before the first half comes to an end. St. Louis leads it by one from L.A. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. 
If you've been dreaming of catching a part of the St. Louis Steamers action, don't be left in the fog. Schnooks can make your dream come true. Register today at Schnooks to be an honorary ball boy or girl at one of the Steamers home games. To enter, write in 25 words or less why you'd like to see the Steamers in action. If selected, you'll receive four tickets to a game, a souvenir soccer ball, a photo taken with your favorite player, and more. Catch the thrill of Steamers soccer. Register today at Schnooks, the friendliest stores in town. For those Steamer fans wondering why I call Mr. Brunette and Mr. Kehoe coach, as we look and check out the officials standing in midfield, Jeff Mantell, the senior official, Toro Skabrichin, and Bob Mazenow in the penalty box. Of course, Bob Brunette coached the Bush amateur team. Several of those Steamers played for that team, and the one that won the national championship several years ago, so he obviously has done a lot of coaching. And Mr. Kehoe, a former coach of the St. Louis Stars, and doing a lot of amateur coaching in the St. Louis area, so... For you fans who might have been wondering, like the ones that put the question to me the other night, why I call them coach, that's why. They, they have coached soccer for a long time, and I feel honored to sit next to two gentlemen that know so much about the game. Oh, thank you, young man. That's a very nice thing for you to say. Of course, it's past Bob Burnett's bedtime back in St. Louis, so I'm not sure he's still up watching. Maybe, maybe Mary let him stay up tonight. We'll see. 11.02 well, yeah. left in the second quarter. Down the right side, Carl Rose whacks it off the boards nicely for Tim Walters on the interception. Timmy across the red line, cuts it to the left wing. Back at the point, McEwen. Nice play and a knock away by Alan Kelly. And then he went down, and Duncan must have gotten a piece of him on the way by because Jeff Mantell called a foul on Duncan. I think Duncan came in with a little bit of a high foot there, Bob, and that's the, that's the call. I think the timeout really was called just a moment ago uh, Bobby because uh, L.A. realizes that that steamers have a, a certain pace a certain rhythm going and they're trying to break that rhythm the steamers are playing very well tonight. Yeah there's nothing that says you have to take a time out in the last two minutes of a quarter with 11 5 left like Peter Wall did could be a great thing. Long ball from the keeper. Milano down the left side. Cuts it to the right side. Slobo whacks it off the boards. Net is empty. Sammy Bick got there. Another chance for Beto. And Slobo got in front of it. Oh, brother. <laughs> when they got that ball up over the top of Sammy Bick, that's when all the fun started. I'm telling you, this is a wild one. Boy, what a good save on the kick by Slobo. Of course, Duncan McEwen was standing at the post to knock the ball away. They were complaining that one of the L.A. players had committed a dangerous play. Beto will have the free kick on the right side. It's actually a corner with 10.22 left in the second quarter. Milano and Garcia in front. Michaelis and Kelly at the point. Michaelis is very near him on the right wing, and Kelly's out at the point beyond the top arc of the penalty area. They dump it all the way out for him. He's got it, and he shot it wide. They got it right through there. Ty Keo anticipated but couldn't reach it. Carl Rose fights for it on the near boards. Ty Keo tries to clear it, couldn't get it out. Garcia, Keo, and Rose double teaming him. Two steamers go to the ball and get it back to Slobo as Toros Kabrichin scrambles to get out of the way. Slobo rolls it left side, Ty Keo. Slobo back to Ty. L.A. doing that great job of marking up front that they're known for. Neil Cohen a touch on the near boards, plays it diagonally to the left wing. Ebert was coming the other way. And so at misconnection, back to get it, Gus Michaelis. Hey, ahead for Beto. Number five against Ebert with the midfield stripe left side. He spots him in at the right point, Michaelis. Timmy Walters watching him. They've got Milano and Garcia operating in front. Garcia touched it for Milano and went down, and Neil Cohen says he took a dive. Neil with his hands on his hips. Disagreeing with the call from Toros. And it'll be a dead ball situation for L.A. About 12 yards out in front of the St. Louis goal, shaded toward the left wing. Ebert and Keogh, the two-man wall. Beto right side, Kelly feeds it through, knocks straight up, and Bellinger, a little flick on header, got it back to Slobo. Boy, Slobo's throwing that ball, but Ebert broke the wrong way. Kelly got it. Back to the red line. Ty Keogh defending. Alan Kelly, right-footed shot in, deflected, and Slobo pushed it right away from Oops. Beto. The ball changed directions. It was either Garcia or Bellinger that touched it on the way in. I think I've seen enough deflections for one night. Milano, Cohen guarding him, and Neal. Good slide tackle physically to knock it down the floor. Walters and Ebert leave. Cacciatore and O'Meara, the hurry-scurry line is on there. Jeff got a piece of it. They dump it back into the defensive end for the goalkeeper. 
Saxon's on for Kelly, who put in a long shift out there. Now Beto's going to lead for L.A. Nope, he's going to stay on near the bench. On the near side, Nathan Sachs catch it. Torrey hounding him. Ty Keogh touched it away. Jeff a touch on the near boards. Back to Ty Keogh. I'd like to have a nickel for every steal Jeff has here tonight. Keogh down the slot. Lindsay on him from behind. Shooting it in. Stepped away by Nathan Sachs. On the near boards, a collision coming. Keogh and Sachs going. Added along the boards. And Garcia picks it up. Catch it, Torrey on him. Card Cardenas on the far boards. Neil Cohen tripped him up. And I got a feeling the officials are counting in the back of their minds how many fouls Neil Cohen's committed this evening and it's not going to be many more. Cacciatore was in on that too but I think Neil made the initial hit. We always we always have a little trouble it seems with Mr. Cabrician uh, when he officiates our game. I'm not saying that he bends over backwards to go after us but uh, it just seems to work out that way. In front of Dinette as the ball came down the right wing and Slobo slammed it off the boards and hit a body and came right back in. O'Mara whacked off the ball by Nathan Sachs all the way down the floor and Slobo picks it up again. The steamers have had many anxious moments around that goal mouth. The MISL stingiest defense looking a bit sloppy at times. Neil Cohen up the right side over two lines. O'Mara against Nathan Sachs. Mike takes a whack at it, took it away, but they're going to call him for a foul. What he did was he put his foot right through the legs of Sachs and knocked it away on the boards. Well, we'll check and see. Well, Sachs went down, so it was a pretty good call. 7.50 left, second quarter. Steamers three, Lasers two. St. Louis with the only second quarter goal. They get the ball by Bellinger. L.A.'s got a break. Man open, left wing. Lindsay, one touch and a shot in front. Bellinger traps it. Nicely back to Slobo. Mr. Cool, Tony Bellinger. Never gets rattled. Always does the outstanding job. Knows just what to do with the ball. Fine play. Tony scored assists in five straight games with his gorgeous one on Timmy Walters' goal tonight. Davis across the red line. One two with Ebert. Ricky got it back. Looking for Donnie in front. Tripped up. No penalty. It'll be a foul. Ooh. Ebert says, how can it not be a penalty? As Alan Kelly kind of looks agonized at the official too. Boy, what a great cut in by Ricky. But he's about to shoot that ball. See, he's going to tee that thing up and blast it. I just, uh, Kelly thinks he got the ball. Maybe he got a piece of it, and that's why there was no penalty call. Carl Rose runs over it. Davis, well, they're going to have to try something else. That didn't work. Lasers didn't fall for the decoy that time. Hulser cleared it out, and out goes right through for Mark Lindsay down the right side. Against Sammy Bick. Sammy anticipated well. Lindsay just handed it to him, and Sammy did the best thing by not doing anything. He just waited. Now at midfield, Bick fights off Alan Kelly to get possession for St. Louis. Ahead to Ebert. Big Daddy pushes him down. Clyde Best. And it'll be a foul on L.A., a free kick for St. Louis inside the L.A. red line. Carl Rose right side for Ricky Davis. Davis cuts it in and shoots. Ebert deflection as he tried to get the rebound off the boards. It's up into the crowd. We'll take a timeout. 6.52 left in the second quarter of play. Steamers lead it by 1-3-2. And from the form, this is Steamer Soccer. Never enjoyed eating breakfast till I started coming to McDonald's. Egg McMuffin and Danish, can't beat it. I like that drive up window, just zip right through, get your order and you're on your way to work. There's always a smile. There's always, good morning, may I help you? That, that's great, especially early. And another thing, the price is right. And the juice is sweet. And whenever I can get a good breakfast like this, why miss it? Good morning, McDonald's and you. Bob Carpenter, Bob Kehoe at the L.A. Forum in Inglewood, actually, near the airport. Steamers lead it 3-2. Goals tonight from McEwen, Walters, and Ebert. L.A. goals from Garcia and Lindsay. It's been a good one so far. Very entertaining contest. Back to midfield. Nathan Sachs on the far side for Gus Michaelis. Tim Walters watching him. I know Timmy's dad was up out of his seat when he scored that goal tonight. Mr. Walters at all the home games at the arena. Michaelis feeds it in left side. Batata could reach it. Sammy Bick pulls it down and turns and clears it. It stays, well, went out of play. It hit the right hit on the top of the board in between the player benches. And it'll be a kick in for L.A. as our handheld cameraman was scrambling down there. Sammy Bick, I'm telling you, what a miscarriage of justice when he was chosen on that all-star team. Yep. Jimmy Millinder. On the right wing, hasn't seen action much today. He puts it out on top for Michaelis, winding up. Tim Walters with the block there. Millinder 
who scored a goal against the Steamers here last time, pulled it down, and McEwen took it away. Duncan for Walters as they out man their opponent very well. Timmy fighting for it, got away from two men with it, making a good run to midfield. Right side, Diego Pesa. Diego back to Walters, a little bit too far as he tried to place it to Timmy coming down the slot. Walters, after working so hard, the defensive end might have been a step slow at the other end because it took Timmy a long time to get downfield after hustling and bustling for possession of that ball. Beto dumps it out to the wing. Ricky Davis stealing it. Ricky's going to try to split the defense here. Oh, Sacks whacks him down. Play on. Pesa for Davis. Ricky back to Pesa. Oh. And Sacks puts it into the crowd. I'll, I'll tell, tell you one thing in respect for Ricky Davis, Bob. He could have been, oh, this could have been a foul. But then Ricky, not hearing a whistle, just kept on going. A lot of players would have stopped. Then he got it back from Pesa and darn near scored. A lot of players would have stopped because they'd have been on the floor. Yeah, they couldn't have gotten back up. <laughs> His balance is just uncanny. I don't know how he does things like that. And that was a big man colliding with him, too. Nathan Sachs, 6'1", 175. Steamer's talking to the official. I guess they're going to say that the ball was knocked up into the stands by the L.A. defender, so Davis will have the right wing corner kick. Steamer scored on a free kick from just about this area. This time they're going to put Ebert and Walters away from the ball and break them toward Ricky. They come in, dump it out for Bellinger. Left side, McEwen a shot. He hit it over the top of the bar off the glass. Now Garcia down the left wing. Ricky Davis running hard to catch up with him. Boy, that's a foot race. Davis slams into the boards. They center it on top. Best a shot and hit. The man to the right of the net, Ola Mickelson, and went wide. Slobo piece of it in front. Beto hit the goal post. Rebound a save oh, by Slobo. Save. What a save. Steamer's got some help from the post. Now Beto gets it back. Bellinger steps in front of him. That's going to oh, be a no. foul on Tony. Tony's angry. I'm not sure I agree with that. I well, don't coach, blame him. I can understand them making the call, but the whistle seemed like it was slow to me. Yes, sir. Seemed like a slow whistle. We didn't hear it right away. Boy, they hit the post, and then it came out, and Slobo made a gorgeous save. That ball was going in, too. Yep. L.A. free kick to Slobo's right, about eight yards away. Beto is their best. Kelly at the point is Garcia. Ola Mickelson in the far post. Beto for Mickelson. He fanned oh. on it. Boy, he got away from Bellinger, didn't he? Yes, sir. In front, off the board. Slobo knocks it away. Duncan McEwen tries to clear it. Bounds off a player, comes in front. Timmy Walters, the high clearance. Ebert, beautiful flick on header down the floor for Ricky Davis. Ricky, one-on-one -on -one against Clyde Best. Cuts it inside, lays it off. Oh, brother, he's taken out hard by Beto. Get Ricky a bulletproof vest for this one. Garcia down the left wing. Bestie a shot in front. Ebert, the rebound. Oh, back to the keeper, and Best almost punched it in. They say play on. Now we have a whistle as Slobo is hurt. Uh-oh. Well, those back passes are dangerous against a team like L.A. Coach because they're so fast. They really get back on your keeper, even a big guy like Clyde Best. Slobo's getting some ethyl chloride sprayed on his right arm from the trainer, Bill Jennings. Slobo, you could see his mouth open in pain as he and Big Daddy collided. Looks like he, he either got it in the elbow or, or on the forearm. Uh, you know what, what's happening here, Bob, is the, the pace here is so fast. This is, this is as Toby Charles puts it so aptly when he broadcasts the German soccer on TV, uh, it's all this end-to-end -end stuff. It's just race car soccer, back and forth and back and forth. And people are running, just running wild all over this floor out here. They're coming from all directions. So and normally a uh, safe play on a pass back to your goalkeeper, and a guy is coming from, you know, 40, 50, 60 feet away, uh, hell-bent for election, so to speak, and he's, and he's in on top of this ball before it ever reaches his destination. And then you have a collision between a guy like Clyde Best and Slobo, and neither one of them are going to give ground, so Yanni come up with the injury. But Slobo appears to be all right. Yeah. Bill Jennings came out. Peter Wald, the coach of the LA Aztecs, has led his team to the playoffs. While at the other end, Dave Clemens, as if he doesn't have enough injuries to worry about already with Daryl Duran out for several games. And of course, by the way, we want to tell you about Tony Glavin. He was operated on in Philadelphia today. Tony reports the surgery was successful. He'll be coming back to St. Louis shortly. But I must tell you, it may be a long while before we see Tony Glavin back active in a steamer uniform again. In fact, it'll probably be next season and maybe not even for this opener. It just depends on Tony's ability to recover from what's become a fairly serious situation. But we wish the motorman all the best, and we miss him terribly, I can tell you. We have missed him all year long. 
you wonder where the steamers would be in the West with Slobo not out for six weeks and Steve Petcher in there for the whole season and Tony Glavin in there for the whole season. And the race might have been over a long time ago, but all due respect to Wichita, Kansas City, and L.A., they've done a great job themselves. On the near side, Garcia. Check it, it was Cardenas back to Michaelis. Kelly at the midfield circle. Timmy Walters a touch off his foot into the steamer bench. It'll be a kick in for L.A. 3.49 left in the second quarter. St. Louis leads it 3-2. And don't forget fan appreciation night at the arena on Saturday. These two teams will rematch a free photo album containing action shots of each steamer player to everyone attending the game at the arena, 7.35, the kickoff time Saturday. Here comes Slobo! Alan Kelly back in midfield for Gus Michaelis. Left side, it got by Cardenas into the corner for Lindsay. Back at the point, Kelly winding up in a shot blocked by Ty Keogh. Ty went for it, and Kelly stepped in front of him with a hip check. Cacciatore ahead for Redmond Lane. He couldn't reach it. Redmond recovers it, though, off of a Kelly touch on the near boards and gives it back to Ty Keogh. Caught Ty up over the top, right wing corner. Michaelis looking to his keeper, then coming out to the point. Clearing it around Redmond Lane, who was called for a chippy foul along the boards. Well, L.A. says, why'd you call the foul? We had the ball. We had the ball, and we were going with it. Sometimes I think the advantage rule has been forgotten in this league. And I don't think we saw anywhere that was more obvious than last week when a steamer had a breakaway, and they called a foul on the Memphis Americans at the other end of the field about 15 seconds after St. Louis got the ball. That was the most unbelievable one I've seen this year. It cost St. Louis a goal. They were fortunate enough to go on to win that game. Tony Bellinger down the left wing. Redmond Lane fighting Michaelis. Has it at the left point. Tony Bellinger a touch. Tony looking on the near side for Larry Hulser. Boy, L.A. just marks you so tight all over the field. They just cut down your passing lanes. Right side, Cardenas against Neil Cohen. Near point, Kelly winding up. Far side, Cohen punched it away. Left corner, Cardenas off the glass in front. Neil heads that one away. Back to the point for Kelly. Looks like a power play, doesn't it? Off the boards in front, a flick on shot by Garcia. It was going wide, but Slobo grabbed it anyway. Bellinger, the man marking there. Slobo's going to kick it for one of the few times tonight. Nicely straight ahead for Cacciatore. Jeff, Hulser, and Redmond Lane, three on three. Redmond at the left point. Has to take on a player. Has to go back to the point for Sammy Bick. Sammy touches it twice. On the near boards, going to the corner against Millinder. Michaelis cleared it away, and Batata picks it up on the near boards. Far side, Cardenas. They had Millinder breaking down diagonally toward the St. Louis goal. 2-10 left. Cardenas left side. Cacciatore the steal, and Jeff over the red line up to the midfield area. Redmond Lane running hard in front of him. Jeff holding the ball. Carl Rose just stepped on. He's got Hulser at the left side. Jeff put it behind him. Larry's going to have to hustle to keep it away from Nathan Sachs. Carl Rose, near side, midfield area. Touching the red line. Cuts it left side nicely for Sammy Bick. Sammy took it off the boards and gave it back to Hulser. Steamers want to be a little cautious here, although they want to be offensive. We have a foul along the boards, and Redmond Lane's going to be called for. Fouling Michaelis. Coach, you want your team to attack, but you want them to attack intelligently at this stage of the game. You don't want to give up a goal in the last two minutes before halftime that would give the home team the momentum back going to the locker room. Right. That would mean a lot to L.A. if they went in there all tied up, having come from behind twice already. Uh, but the steamers, I agree, they have to slow it down a little bit, control the ball a little bit more, be a little more selective on their shots. Midfield, Batata back for best. Ebert checking up front along with Davis. Best place to pressure him is at midfield. Keep that ball from coming into your defensive zone. Sammy Bick also to make a defensive play. Down back on the red line. It's best on the near side for Nathan Sachs. Dumped back by Stuart Lee for Batata. Sammy Bick guarding him. Batata was waiting for a foul call and looked up and still had the ball. Stuart Lee open. Carl Rose knocks him down. Stuart Lee, I think, took a little bit of a dive, but he was definitely fouled. Carl obstructed him. Stuart Lee would lead us to believe he was punched out, though, the way he went down. So it was definitely a foul. A minute three left, top of the penalty arc, about 10 yards directly in front of Slobo. Ebert and Davis, the two-man wall. Millinder, left point. Best a shot, and Slobo the save. Kelly a shot, and Sammy Bick knocked it down. 
Boy, Clyde Best really ripped that thing, didn't he? <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't tear Slobo's arm out of the socket with that. But Millinder. Slobo, great save. Yes, sir. Up over the right side. Ball knocked high in the air by McEwen with less than a minute left. Clock shows 45. Duncan, a nice trap for Ricky Davis. They're playing volleyball with it. Ebert cuts it right side. McEwen. Duncan Davis. Left side Ebert. Can't get a shot. Goalkeeper Shermer jumps on it. Oh, Ebert just couldn't get an angle on the net. One too many passes there. I think Davis should have shot the ball. Left side, Batata. Steamers were looking for the easy tip in. Batata, midfield circle. 20 seconds left ahead for Stuart Lee. Lee, right point. Ebert knocks it away. That'll help to kill some more time. Kelly in midfield for Daddy Best. Big Daddy, they call him. Kelly up over the top. That'll go right on goal to Slobo. So St. Louis should go to the locker room with that one goal, 3 2 lead. Ebert with it. Three seconds left. Donnie. Feeding it down long. Bick runs out of space as the first half comes to an end. You have to consider it a good third quarter, rather second quarter for the St. Louis Steamers. They got the only goal of the frame and lead it after 30 minutes of play. Goals from McEwen, Walters, and Ebert. Goals for L.A. from Garcia and Lindsay. And the Steamers lead it by a score of 3-2. And from the forum in L.A., this is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. And you folks on Channel 30 stay with us for the Budweiser Sports Break coming up next with your host, Jim Duff. Fella pulled in a gas station, big car, fancy clothes, want to know where the tailors live. Real nosy, asked a lot of questions. Well, what'd you tell him? Nothing. I just played dumb. I know how to do that real good, you know. <laughs> so you're going to be a real musician, huh, Hope? Well, I don't know. When you get to be like one of them beagles, you still going to speak to me? Beagles good. <laughs> wow! The Andy Griffith Show, weeknights at 6.30, right here on Channel 30. Here are the final four winners in the Steamer Six-Pack Sweepstakes. If you see your name, call Channel 30 at 436-3030 within two business days, and you and five friends will enjoy a Steamer's home game courtesy of Channel 30, Budweiser, and the St. Louis Steamers. Stay tuned to Channel 30 for more great prizes and giveaways, and watch and win. Hi, I'm Tony Glavin of the St. Louis Steamers, and I'm at Team Togs and Tickets, where we have everything from T-shirts, jerseys, and satin jackets to caps and pennants, with all of your favorite team's logos and colors, plus Ticketmaster computerized ticket service for the Steamers and most St. Louis sporting and theatrical events. And available now, my book, Let's Talk Soccer, at either the Northwest Plaza or Chesterfield Mall, Team Togs and Tickets, the store for sports fans of all ages. Tickets available now. Budweiser Sports Break with Jim Duff. Good evening. Welcome to Sports Break. We're at halftime of the Steamer Los Angeles game. Let's update that score for you. Good game right now. Steamer's on top. 3-2 at the half. Duncan McEwen, Tim Walters, Don Ebert have the St. Louis goals. The St. Louis Blues are looking to win their third playoff game in a row against the Minnesota North Stars tonight. Last evening, the Blues dominated Minnesota and won by a score of 3-1. This evening, Minnesota kind of returned the favor. 3-2 the final score over the Blues. Greg Poslowski, Bernie Federko had the St. Louis goals. Other games around the NHL this evening. Quebec over Montreal, 4-3. That's a final. The Islanders beat Washington 5-2. Edmonton on top of Calgary after 2. 3-2 the score there. It was cold and it was rainy, but that didn't stop thousands of runners from heading to Boston for the world's most famous marathon. More than 7,000 runners brave the rain and cold today to take part in this year's 88th running of the Boston Marathon. The story for the men was Jeff Smith, who was the first runner-up in last year's New York Marathon. Smith won the Boston easily with a time of 2 hours, 10 minutes, and 34 seconds. The winner in the women's division, Lorraine Moeller of New Zealand, she finished in 2 hours, 29 minutes, and 28 seconds. 
Okay, we are going to take a short break right here, but when we come back, we'll take a look at the Steam Heat Dancers, and that'll be coming your way right after you see this. Budweiser salutes the coaches and trainers of the 1984 U.S. Olympic team. Olympic coaches and trainers, the team behind the team, this Bud's for you. Southwestern Bell Telephone wants you to know about push-button phones and touch-tone service. Touch-tone service gives you faster calling and future technology like banking by phone. But not just any push-button phone will give you this convenience. It takes a tone telephone along with touch-tone service from the Southwestern Bell Telephone Network. So if you want touchstone convenience, make sure you have a tone phone and touchstone service. And stay in touch. There's not a game in the world quite like it. It is speed, strategy, suspense. If you can face the challenge and take the pressure, look quickly and watch closely as a great American sports tradition gets down to business at Bush Stadium. Swing and a long one! Baseball, the legacy lives on. Sun go up, sun go down. Hear the beat, see it swell. Welcome back. Three years ago, they were just starting out, and nobody really knew who they were. But now, the Steam Heat Dancers are among the most popular girls in St. Louis, and some of the hardest workers. Stop. Watch it. You've got to keep your feet together. You're all over the place. I'm a great soccer fan and I enjoy sports in general and it gave me an opportunity to dance as well as be involved in sports. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Arms, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got that? All right. Make no mistake about it, this is hard work. Getting up in the morning to practice when you'd rather be sleeping. Giving up countless hours of your time to make appearances, car washes, charitable events. In all, over 200 functions a year. 113. And then there's the weekly weigh-in. The scale doesn't lie. And if you're a few pounds overweight, everyone knows about it. But for the 100 or so ladies who make up the steam heat dancers, it's all worth it. The rewards outweigh the sacrifices. You just you go out on the field and the fans are just screaming and it's a great feeling inside. You're kind of nervous and yet at the same time you're real excited. All the fans, are, it's great. <laughs> For the Steam Heat dancers, this is what it's all about. The thrill that comes from performing in front of thousands of fans at each and every Steamer home game. It may only last a few minutes, but it makes the hours of practice seem worth it. At first, the Steamers were skeptical. The, uh, the fans were saying, you know, they're, they're, they're cute. You know, who are they? Who do they think they are? You know, 26-year-old Rusty Herman has been in charge of the Steam Heat dancers since they were formed three years ago. He takes care of the business end of things, such as booking appointments, finding corporate sponsors, and making sure everyone is where they're supposed to be at all times. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five, you're gonna plie on six, six. You drop it to the next level on six. That's five, six, seven, and eight. Choreographer Ray Parks is the one who oversees the dancing end of things planning new routines, making sure that everyone knows that the left foot goes here, the right foot goes there, and then it's all done with the proper amount of grace and style. Parks runs a tight ship. The steps are repeated over and over again until they're done correctly. Most 
these girls have five years of dance experience or more. A lot of them have danced as long as, like, the little steam heat line. You know, those girls are young. They've been dancing since they're uh, four or five years old. Now, when those girls grow up, they're going to be outstanding. But uh, this is something new that we started, and they have to know how to dance. Cheering is not going to get it. Cut, foot, loose, up. Heads on loose. Heads on loose, foot, you're down on foot. Everybody's got to do it or else it's going to look funny. Part of it all. I've been dancing since I was three, and my mom just asked me if I wanted to um, try out, and, and then I made it, and I just like to dance. We went to um, a telethon, and we met Glenn Scarpelli and Sammy Davis Jr. Um, after the game or something, they'll say you did a really good job, or my friends will say, call me up and say you did really good, or something like that. While you have to be able to dance, it also helps to look good. And before each game, you'll find the dancers getting ready in their dressing room, trying to achieve that perfect look. Excuse me. that has made the steam heat poster a hot sell in St. Louis. Already over 7,000 have been purchased. Three years ago, all of this was just a dream, just an idea. Now it's safe to say the steam heat Okay, now let's go to Bob Carpenter for an update on tonight's game. Bobby, can you hear me? Yes, sir, Jim. This is what you would call, I think, a wide-open soccer game, 3-2 the score, but it could have been more like 5-4, to four. a lot of offensive action in that first half. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, Bob Keough and I were talking on radio a few minutes ago, Jim. It's one of the best first halves we've seen throughout the year in terms of action and scoring and up and down the floor, and I think it's a very entertaining game for the folks to see on TV tonight. And, you know, L.A. matches up very well with St. Louis. We talked about that earlier because they're a quick team as well. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights now and see how we got to this 3-2 game at halftime. First of all, the Steamers, Ricky Davis down in the corner against Nathan Sachs, came away from the corner beautifully and then found Duncan McEwen steaming down the slot. Duncan beat him a minute 37 in, and St. Louis led it 1-0. Coley Garcia in from the point, got around Ty Keogh. Ty gambled and lost. Ricky Davis couldn't get the ball, and Garcia, nice toe shot at 439, his 37th of the year. We're tied at one. Then Tony Bellinger, great individual effort. He just takes Alan Kelly to the cleaners right here, takes it all the way down to the corner, and watch Ricky Davis hanging around the slot. Also, there is Timmy Walters. Ricky was kind of a decoy, and Timmy was right in there for his 26th goal at 529, 2-1 St. Louis. Bellinger's 12th assist. It was a beauty. Mark Lindsay, his 10th of the year unassisted. I don't even know if we want to look at this one. Larry Hulser made a bad defensive mistake. And then Carl Rose deflects the ball off the shot from Lindsay. It's 2-2 at the end of the first quarter as L.A. got a goal with a minute 19 remaining. And the Steamers were very upset with themselves at that time. 
Only goal of the second quarter. Beautiful dead ball situation. Carl Rose is a decoy. Ricky Davis feeds it in. Ebert, perfect deflection into the net. His 19th of the year. Ricky Davis's 18th assist on the free kick. 39 seconds in. And you know, Jim, Peter Wall did something very intelligent at that point. For about the next minute after that St. Louis goal, the Steamers were all over the Lasers in the uh, attacking end. Peter Wall called a timeout after the Steamers almost went up 4-2, and that really turned things around and got L.A. back in the game in the second quarter. So that'll do it for the first half from L.A. Okay, Bobby, thank you very much. That's going to do it for Sports Break this evening. Our next show will be this Wednesday when the Blues play up in Minnesota. Now stay tuned for more soccer action. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim Duff. Herbert and I have been happy together for 35 years. Then suddenly last night, Herbert kicked the bucket. People everywhere are kicking the bucket for the great taste of Church's fried chicken. That's because Church's chicken is big, bigger than Kentucky Fried. And you always get Church's tender, juicy, quality chicken at a deliciously low price. Mmm, Church's chicken is delicious. Herbert, you should have kicked the bucket years ago. Tell someone you know to kick the bucket and come to Church's. Engine heat, high RPMs, make today's smaller, harder working engines run hot, like these racers. And for protection, there's new Amico Ultimate 100% synthetic motor oil. Look how Ultimate resists high heat on this engine cylinder wall. Premium oil thickens, loses its protection, but Ultimate keeps flowing and lubricating. Ultimate helps engines last longer. There's more St. Louis Blues, Minnesota North Stars Stanley Cup playoff action coming your way on Channel 30. The teams are returning to the Met Center for Game 5, Wednesday night at 7.30. They score! The Gilmore! And the Blues have tied this series one game apiece. Dan Kelly and Ron Oaks will call the shots as the Blues continue their battle for the Norris Division crown. It's the Blues versus the North Stars live Wednesday at 7.30 here on Channel 30. I think we had a good breakfast at McDonald's this morning. Everybody got to sort of choose what they wanted. Egg McMuffin? It's breakfast. It's good. I like the hot biscuits with sausage because I know they're fresh because I can see them make them behind the counter. Actually, coming here is a, is a good way to get everybody out of bed in the morning, too, because when we say we're coming to McDonald's, that's when uh, Teresa starts moving and starts getting dressed. Breakfast at McDonald's is great. Good morning, McDonald's and you. Appreciation Night at the arena Saturday when the Steamers take on the L.A. Lasers. A free photo album containing action shots of each Steamer player to everyone attending the game. Fan Appreciation Night at the arena Saturday night, 735. The Steamers and the Lasers will get it on in the regular season finale. Don Ebert, Ricky Davis will kick it off at midfield for St. Louis as we start the third quarter of play, moving right to left. Duncan McEwen is out there with Carl Rose and Sammy Bick. First few minutes of this third quarter, very important from a tempo standpoint. Slobo kicks it down the floor for Ebert. Donnie a touch. Back to Carl Rose. All the way back to Slobo again as the Steamers want to play a little possession and hold on to that thing for a while. Slobo boots it up the near side into the players' bench. It'll be a kick in for L.A. 22 seconds into the third quarter. Bob Carpenter along with Bob Kehoe. 3-2 St. Louis. The Steamers very simply have to win. They also have to win Thursday at Phoenix. And really also Saturday at home against L.A. Ricky Davis down the right side. Ebert, nice ball. Donnie cuts it away from the boards. Looking on the near side. Sammy Bick knocks it down. Tries to fake out Michaelis. Michaelis took him off the ball as a couple of number 17s did battle. It's up the right wing for Willie Milano. Man's unmarked on the left side. With it now is Batata. Right side, Michaelis fakes a shot. On top, Beto hit it into the crowd. Check it, it was Mark Lindsay. It'll be a goal kick for St. Louis. We overmarked on that on that particular play down there, Bobby. We had we had three players moving toward one player with the ball, and we left a man open on the far side over here. We're, we're getting a little, little committed too much to the ball on defense. Slobo and Carl Rose will handle the goal kick. The reason the Steamers have to win all three, Wichita plays two more games, one at home, one away, and even if the Wings win at home and lose on the road, the Steamers, by winning all three, 
can tie them, or rather be a game ahead of them. But if the Steamers only win two out of three, they'll tie Wichita. And that gives it to the Wings on the goal differential. So Wichita is really in the driver's seat. The Steamers have to make it happen with three straight wins and hope the Wings fall once. Ty Keo out on top. Left point, Sammy Bick right through the legs of his man Batata, who looked back and grinned. Carl Rose at the right point, shoots it in. Well wide of the goal on the near side, and Mark Lindsay picks it up for the Lasers of L.A. Batata, one touch for Clyde Best of midfield. Straight ahead, left wing, red line. Milano back to Best. Big Daddy down behind Batata. Millinder in the corner. Ty Keo watching him. We're a minute and a half into the third quarter. Best again, right side. Whoops, Carl Rose whacked Milano. It'll be a St. Louis foul, L.A. free kick. Clyde Best has been an interesting transition. He was always an attacker, a striker in his outdoor soccer days with the Portland Timbers and the Tampa Bay Rowdies, and now he's a defender indoors, prolonging his career. Oh, in front, Slobo in trouble. Ball came off the boards. He got a couple of touches to knock it away. Sachs puts it in. Slobo up over the top of Carl Rose. Somehow manages to keep the ball, if not his feet, inside the penalty area. Well, another one of those anxious moments, huh? Timmy Walters up the middle. He's got Sammy Bick right side. Sammy in the corner. Shooting it in. Timmy, it was behind him. Bick tried to get the rebound and couldn't reach it. Oh, the pass was just too far behind Timmy. He might have had a second of the evening. Down the middle, Clyde Best. Left side, Batata. Carl Rose touched it away. Millinder, thank you, says Tim Walters. Timmy, though, handed it back to Batata and then had to boot it up. And it hit Batata's foot on the way to the crowd. Ball is out of play. We'll have a line change with 12.35 left in the third quarter. We'll take a timeout. Steamer still holding on to that one goal lead and looking for more in L.A. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. Give me a light. A Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. And I'll have a light. <laughs> so if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Uh, give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Neil Cohen the kick in for St. Louis on the far side. Two minutes, 25 seconds into the third quarter of play. Neal toes it down the left wing. Cacciatore tries to flick on header. Alan Kelly a piece of it. The catch got it back. O'Meara clears it out for Hulser. Larry shooting wide to the left post. O'Meara was coming in diagonally trying to get a rebound or a tip in there. And it got by him. Up the far side, Michaelis left it for Alan Kelly. Up over the right side, off the glass. It's played down to the feet of Poli Garcia, who scored the first goal of the evening for the Lasers. Kelly, left side, Michaelis, Bellinger hounding him. Cacciatore the same against Kelly. Cohen the same against Cardenas as they chase the Lasers back into their own goal mound. Kirk Shermer put it up. Well, if Hulser would left to go, it would have crossed three lines, but Larry wanted to be sure he had it. Cacciatore left side. O'Mara rips it, bounces in front. Rebound, knocked down by Michaelis. O'Mara, Michaelis was in the air. Mike got it free for Bellinger. Tony a shot, he hit it wide. O'Mara the rebound. Another one in front, header by Bellinger, straight up it goes, Michaelis the clearance, Cohen pulls it down, Neal shot, knocked straight up by Cardenas, O'Mara header, he'll get called for the foul, and that's going to be a two-minute call. Mike O'Mara lost his head a little bit there, Bob, I think he got a bit frustrated and really whacked his man, and you know, the L.A. player, Cardenas, had such good position, and Mike just went right up over the top of his head. Yeah, he came in from behind him on top of it, and uh, I think he did get caught up in the heat of the battle there. Well, let's hope that doesn't hurt us now. At the same time, you don't want to take Mike's enthusiasm away from him. He's playing with a lot of heart out there. He was after the ball, but it, he got a little bit too much of the man there. Well, they'll allow a little bit of contact on that, but you can't, uh, you can't decapitate people while you're after that ball either. Unsportsmanlike conduct, the call against rookie midfielder Mike O'Mara. It's Mike's third and fourth penalty minutes of the year. O'Mara is appearing in his 18th game this year. He's got seven points on three goals and four assists. Steamers have the best penalty killing unit in the league. Only 24 goals and 77 attempts, 68.8%. L.A. the power play, 22 for 65. A shot in, changed directions as a hit catch at tour. L.A. hits on 33.8% of its power plays. That's a better figure than St. Louis, but not among the league leaders. Slobo dumped it all the way down. Anxious moments now. 
L.A. with a real chance to equalize with the man advantage for another minute and a half. But Tata, top, he's the quarterback. Left side, Nathan Sachs. They've got Cardenas and Stuart Lee in there, but Tata, the shot went way wide. He hit that one bad, and Ty Keogh heads it out. Also, Poli Garcia, the man at the right point, catch a Tori Keogh, Vic and Cohen killing the penalty for St. Louis. Left side, Batata. Nathan Sachs in the corner, Stuart Lee off the boards in front. Oh, and it just got away from Cardenas. He would have had an empty net. Check it, that was Garcia. This is Cardenas on the right wing. In front, header off the board, Slobo, piece of it. Easy goal. Slobo gambled and lost again, and we're tied 3-3. But there again, Bobby, I think I think we had three people. I think we had Slobo and two defenders going after. There's one defender. There's two and look, one, two defenders and Slobo, and a man open in front of the goal. Stuart Lee got the easiest goal he'll get this year. 4.31, the time of the power play goal, and it was a nice assist by Poli Garcia. Well. So the penalty hurt us, but we're back on even ground, so it's anybody's game. I still like the way the steamers are playing. Stuart Lee, his 31st of the year. Garcia, his 20th assist. Stuart Lee gets his seventh power play goal. Now Don Ebert down the left side for Carl Rose. In front, Ebert, and he hit it wide. Donnie had a good sliding attempt. Up the far boards, Garcia. On the near side for Nathan Sachs. Poli Garcia's hurt the steamers tonight. He made that play. Beto, right side, Nathan Sachs. Well, home team's got the momentum back. Beto against Rose. Still working for a shot. Can't find a lane. Has to go back on top for Clyde Pass. He has Kelly overlapping. Alan Kelly, the shot. On goal, and Slobo had problems with it, but got it down and in control. Lucky. Kelly has a vicious left foot. He's not a big man, but he can hit that ball. On the right side, Ebert came on a crisscross with Davis, and Carl Rose's ball was too far ahead. Dave Clemens was waving something at Slobo to see if he was okay. On the far side, Beto lost it to Carl Rose. Carl gave it right back to Beto. Here comes Milano. Carl tried to get fancy and pulled top the ball. Left side, and on goal! Slobo the save. Well, that's the kind of thing that's been hurting the steamers. Carl Rose, instead of kicking the ball away, tried to pull top it around a player and gave it right back to him. Now Davis a chance down the right wing. Ricky cuts it across, and on goal, around the keeper. Bad angle, Scherner gets it. Ricky tried to make that last move inside, and that's what cost him. Down the left side, Batata. At the point, Michaelis, watching as Batata brings it in. He's got a lane down the middle, bouncing shot, and Slobo controls it. Coach, I don't like the way this momentum feels right now, do you? No, it looks like uh, <coughs> looks like the lasers are trying to take charge of the game. And uh, being at home, like we said, they have a little advantage here. So the steamers really have to have to gear themselves up to meet this new challenge. Alan Kelly dumped Ricky Davis on the far side, and the steamers are screaming for a penalty. And now they get two minutes for descent. You can say what you want about the call. It maybe should have been a penalty, but the steamers have got to quit arguing. Too many dissent penalties. Yeah, you just can't have it. You know, we've talked about it before. Uh, you have to have control of your, your emotions when you're in the heat of the battle. What happens out there is you see things, maybe inconsistencies, maybe you think something is unfair, but you have to keep in mind that the referee is going to mis make mistakes just like you make mistakes as a player. You have to overlook that, keep your mouth shut, and keep on going. You can see, you can understand at least, a player uh, pulling a penalty for a physical contact, for a physical foul and uh, his team suffers for that. But to have his team suffer uh, because he loses his control over his mouth, that's another thing. Now that's the first time I've ever seen Ricky Davis do it. We've had other players do it, and I guess it maybe happens to somebody every once in a while, but it's something that should a team should try to eliminate. Steamer's killing a penalty again. Ty Keogh back to Slobo with his feet to his right. There's it down. Cohen fanned on a deflection. Slobo now twisting it out to midfield. Ricky Davis picked up his 16th penalty minute right there. Down the left side, Nathan Sachs on top of Batata. L.A. has a power play goal already. Nathan Sachs. Right side on the boards for Cardenas. Catch it, Torrey chasing him away. Same four-steamer penalty killers who were out there a moment ago when L.A. equalized. 
Left side sacks on the boards for Stuart Lee. Back on top. Taikio watching up over the top. Cardenas heads it in. Catch it. Tori at P7. And Slobo knocked it away from Stuart Lee just in the nick of time. Great save by Slobo. Yep. Catch it. Tori deflected it. Jeff getting in front of that pass. But unfortunately, all the St. Louis deflections by the defenders tonight just seem to be coming toward the goal. And that's nothing you can do about it. You're getting in front of the ball, but it's just unlucky. Batata out on top of the power play. Sammy Bick trying to keep his feet. Left side, Nathan Sachs in the corner. Stuart Lee. Good slide tackle there by Ty Keo. Neil Cohen pushes him back to midfield. Only 40 seconds left in the power play. Garcia, right side, Cardenas hit it weakly and wide. And Slobo comes up with it. Slobo looking to throw it over the head of Sachs. Sachs heading it down. Cacciatore stealing it back. Jeff knocked off the ball by Sachs. It hit the glass and came right to Stuart Lee. 20 seconds left in the L.A. power play. Out on top, Batata. Sammy Bick watching him. Garcia. Cacciatore shoving him off the ball. No whistle. Lay on, they say. Now Catch is dumped in the corner. Neil Cohen hollering for a foul. Batata, left point. Kelly, three seconds left in the power play. Inside, Cardenas, bad angle. Catch it, Torrey, a nice block. Out to the point, Lee, or rather Kelly, and the steamers have killed off the power play. Nicely done by the boys. Centered, oh. easy goal. Another easy goal for Garcia in front. He was unmarked at the post, and L.A. leads it 4-3 to three just a couple of seconds after the power play expires. Six seconds after the steamers killed it, they give up the lead. All right, there's one of the few times you're going to see Sammy Bick unsighted, so to speak, from the man that he's marking. Sammy Bick let, let uh, the goal scorer get on the blind side of him. And probably Sammy was still in the state of mind of uh, playing the man short. He, of course, realized that Davis had come back on the floor, but they were into a rhythm of playing a man short, and they have to overshift and cover greater areas of space when that happens. Maybe that was the reason why Sam let the laser get in behind him on the blind side, and that's where the ball went. Sam, of course, had no idea where he was and went right on his foot. It was an excellent pass. Ole Garcia, second of the night, his 38th of the year. Assist by Stuart Lee, his 20th assist at 8.32, and the Lasers have taken a 4-3 lead. Header in there by Hulser. Diego Pesa, a touch on it. Carl Rose headed out by Alan Kelly. All the way down the floor, Carl will have to go to Slobo. No, he's going to volley it straight up. Carl under pressure from Lindsay. Come on, Carl, make that easy pass. Exactly. Make the easy play, Carl. Give him the ball. Finally, he gives it to Slobo. A little easier when we're up here, but that one was pretty obvious that Carl should dump it off. Ooh, good move by Timmy Waters. He got pace in front, tried to cut it through the legs of Michaelis. Timmy might have been better off going to the boards with that pass. A foul on Pesa. Oh, no, not another one from the bench. This is getting ridiculous. On, fellas. The Steamers are going to get another two-minute penalty for dissent. This one from the bench. Oh, man, let's not lose it like this, gang. This is foolish. Oh, I tell you, they picked a bad time. They were right next to Jeff Mantell. You know, if you're going to howl at the official, wait till he's away from you. Well, I really shouldn't be saying anything anyway, but I, I just, you know, if, if we're going to lose, let's lose it the right way. Let's not lose it by giving it away. And, and we're making an attempt to do that right now. We're still very much in this game. We've got five minutes and 44 seconds left in the third quarter. So there's a lot of time to play. There's a lot of time to score a lot of goals, but, you know, not if we keep giving them away. Carl Rose will serve the penalty. It wasn't on him. It was a bench penalty. I think Carl was on the field. I think they called it a bench penalty because maybe Mantell didn't know exactly who said the magic word, but somebody did, and that's all he needed to hear. Well, steamers, we have to, steamers have been shorthanded for four minutes already and make it six. Decoy through. Oh, what a great play that was. Stuart Lee hit a shot, and Neil Cohen luckily got a piece of it. Garcia in front, headed straight up by Cohen. Where is it, says Slobo, in time to find it. Right side, Sammy Bick. Down the boards. Nathan Sachs took it away. He's got it in midfield on the near side for Batata. 5-10 left, third quarter. Lasers four, Steamers three. Left side, Sachs. You know, this is a very important game. If the Steamers lose this game, they not only probably hand Wichita the division title as Cacciatore blocks a shot in. They also 
will put L.A. in a great position to move into second place eventually. They're two games behind St. Louis right now, but they would make up a game of that tonight with a chance to go to Wichita and then St. Louis Saturday. So a lot more at stake here than just first place, maybe second or third. Out on top, Sachs. Right side, Hardness. Sachs, left point. Shooting by Sammy Bick. It was way wide. Sammy had the angle cut down well. 40 seconds left in the L.A. power play. They didn't do much in the last one because the Steamers played so well. And then St. Louis left a man unmarked at the net and gave up one six seconds after the penalty expired. Now we've got a ball into the stands on the far side and Peter Wall hoping for another power play goal that would put his team up by two. Tony Bellinger coming on. Jeff Cacciatore is going to leave. Looked like Dave Clemens gave Tony Bellinger some specific instructions before sending him on the floor, so let's hope we can hold him off here now for another 37 seconds until Paul Rose comes out of the box. Alan Kelly, red line free kick in the middle for Michaelis. 30 seconds left in the St. Louis bench penalty. Garcia, right wing. They haven't had a shot yet, have they? Uh-oh, now they got one. And a goal. Cardenas from Garcia. It's a third period disaster, and it's 5-3 L.A. All right, this might be a good time. You see the ball snuck in again behind the defense, right through Slobo's legs as he dove to block the shot. Not a whole lot you can do it when you do about it when you're playing a man short. There it is, into the far corner. And through the legs of Slobo. Cardenas is 30th of the year. Garcia, the assist, is 31st. 5-3 L.A. from L.A. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. Koppenheimer is a real factory store, which means our suits, sport coats, and slacks go direct from our factory to a Koppenheimer factory store direct to you. That's the only reason Koppenheimer can sell a suit that would cost you $220 in a department store for only $130. But then you'll always find real bargains at Koppenheimer. After all, we're a real factory store. Steamer's going to have to reach down for some of that old St. Louis magic now. They're down by two. They've given up the game's last three goals all here in the third quarter. Carl Rose off the boards. Ebert slams it high off the glass. Ball got by McEwen. Duncan trying to hold it at midfield. He was tripped up by Garcia. One thing you might want to watch here. If L.A. gets a physical foul, look for the two minutes to come out because the referees often compensate, although unconsciously, Bob, I think, in this situation because the steamers have been wrecked by penalties and Granted, two of them have been for dissent, but look for the officials if L.A. gets physical to call two minutes. It happens so often in this game. Bellinger handed it to Garcia on the boards. Poli looking to center. Has Beto open. Tony outfought him to get it back. But then they dump it off for Beto. Right side, Milano. Shooting, bad angle off the boards. Look out, Kelly! Oh, and a good block by Bellinger. Another timeout will take with 3.31 left. Steamer still scrambling down by two. From the Forum, this is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. Bringing you the best, that means taking the extra step at Schnucks. Ask Tony Vince. He starts early every morning dealing with growers from around the world to select the finest nature offers. Fresh produce is always in season at Schnucks. Ann Richards likes that. She knows some jobs just can't be done from 9 to 5. She appreciates the time and dedication it takes to ensure quality. After all, there's simply no substitute for the very best. 3.31 left. L.A. kick in far side. 5-3, the home team on top. Steamers have got to get a goal before the third quarter ends. Can't go to the fourth quarter down by two or more as Beto was pulled down by Duncan McEwen. No, not another one. Oh, Ebert no. kicked the ball away from the official, and he's going to get two minutes. Call a timeout, Dave. Do something. Yeah, yeah. We need you know, put some, pour some ice water over the guys' heads. Now, the folks, are, the folks on TV, we're going to describe this because it bears looking at. There's the foul. The ball is rolling along the boards, and we'll see what Ebert does. They're getting ready to cue up the ball for the free kick. Ebert will come in. No, he won't. We had to stop the tape there. It took place too late. Well, Donnie kicked the ball past the official. 
once the once the foul has been called and, and, and the play is blown dead, the team that has committed the foul should never touch the ball. The referee can call you for delay of game. He can call you for show of dissent. He can do just about anything when you move that soccer ball. The other, the team is entitled, the team that has been fouled is entitled to that ball and to, to place it and to put it into play as quickly as they so desire. And you're moving the ball, even, even though it be ever so slight, yeah. prevents them from doing that. So well, they don't want that done. The reason Ebert was complaining was that L.A. was nowhere near putting the ball in play. Ebert had the ball, but Kabritchen ruled that he pushed it back to the man to take the free kick too hard and just kicked it out on purpose. Now a shot on goal is controlled by Slobo. Well, I tell you, this reeks of the Wichita playoff game last year. Left side, Timmy Walters, although those were physical fouls and these, man, descent, descent, yellow cards, unsportsmanlike conduct. Maybe we ought to get out of the third quarter down by two and just call it finish and start a new game in the fourth. Batata, so. right side, Garcia, Cardenas, Batata, left side, Sachs, back to Batata. They're throwing the ball like they got it on the string, aren't they? Sammy Bick finally outfought Batata and cleared it down the floor. And the goalkeeper, Shermer, who's had a vacation here in the third period, has it. Tell you what, he could have gotten a tan if it was sunny out here. Right side, Batata. Garcia, back to Batata, looking to the left point for Sachs, running on and shooting. Stopped by Sammy Bick. Ty Keo fans in the clearance. Cohen whacked on the boards. Ty tries to clear it away. Can't. Garcia touches it. Sacks. Great job of control by the Lasers with 55 seconds left in the power play. Sack steps it in across the goal. Now Sammy Bick will get to it. Clears it down the near boards. Timmy Walters chasing after it. Against Batata. Slide tackle. Timmy came in hard. Then knocks Batata down. Call a foul and walk away, guys. Right side, Garcia. Shoots it in. Sammy Bick blocked it nicely. Sammy up the near boards, making a run down the left wing. Nathan Sachs angling on him to catch up. Sammy shooting it in. He was out of gas. Couldn't hit it hard enough. And a save by Shermer. Goalkeeper's got to be so rusty back there, Bob. A good shot might beat him somewhere along here. That's true, but not from that far out, and especially with Sam's left. 20 seconds left. Right side, Garcia. That's in the power play. 140 left in the period. Kelly. High off the glass, over the top of Garcia, has to retrieve it. Five seconds left before Don Ebert re-enters the field. Steamers have played a man sharp for better than half of this quarter. Straight ahead they go, Cardenas turning Ebert's back on. Garcia puts it in and Cohen knocks it out. Ebert running hard to midfield. Knocked away from him by Batata to, to Kelly. Ebert all over Allen. Kelly Donnie is really upset. You can tell by the way he's going after some of these L.A. players. We got a whistle and a foul on the boards and Ebert Slams the ball out of the turf and looks at Kabrichin. Not another one, guys. No. Please. Steamers have done a good job penalty killing. Cohen on a high kick. Knotted the head ball down and had Stuart Lee's foot up in his face. 105 left in the quarter. Maybe they can come up with one here. Walters leaving it for Bick. Ricky Davis steps on. Knocked off the ball by Lindsay, who's called for a foul. Steamers applaud from the bench. Can you get two minutes for applauding? Well, if he, if I he guess thinks if you, you're if trying you to clap make him too foolish. loud. Yeah, if he thinks you're trying to show him up, he can give you two minutes. If you're going to applaud, keep the hands in front of you where the fans can't see. Right. Right side, Walters is shot off an Ebert feed, blocked after the fence. Sammy Bick up over the top. Lindsay rejection on the right side. Neil Cohen shoved by Stuart Lee along the boards. 47 seconds in what's been a third quarter nightmare. Timmy through the legs of a man, Lindsay, but it was rejected by Kelly. Cohen back to Slobo at the other end. Right side, Timmy Walters. Nice ball from Slobo. Down the right wing against Ola Mickelson. One touch to the corner. Knocked up into the stands. Way up there by Michaelis. It'll be a St. Louis kick in on the far side. 31 seconds left. Steamer is on the offensive end. Needing a goal badly. Well, I don't know. You know, you, it, it kind of takes the heart out of you, you know, to, to give up goals like that. Uh, I hope we've learned our lesson, though. You know, this, like you said before, Bobby, this game is much too important. We're going to lose it. Let's lose it the right way. Let's lose it on the floor by playing soccer. Steamer's afraid to touch the ball there, so it took a long time to get it over there for the free kick. Ricky Davis out on top. Carl Rose, left-footed shot, upstairs, goal kick. Oh. 
There's an awful lot of talking going down on that yeah, floor. Yeah, I don't. Now they're going to say it touched an L.A. player. Looked like Carl hit it cleanly up into the crowd. Maybe the steamer's got a break there. There's some of that compensation I was talking about. Come on, fellas. Give us one quick one before we get off here. 29 seconds left. Davis, the trigger man on the left wing. Walters and Ebert in front. Ricky for Donnie. Yes. Score! Ebert took it right out of the air. Oh, from Ricky God. Davis that ball never hit the ground until after Ebert had shot it and the steamers get the quick one they were looking for all right that was very well done Ebert now has redeemed himself somewhat there you saw the ball come out of the corner Ebert with the left foot guided it right into the far corner for his second goal of the evening so uh, we're, we're just one down now 5-4 and they, they responded to our request Bobby when we said give us one before we get off here at the end of the third quarter so we're right back in the game again yeah and keep in mind that came after a questionable call I look like Carl Rose had put it cleanly up into the stands and they gave St. Louis a corner kick and I'll be darned if the guys didn't score at the other end off the kickoff it goes into the crowd Ebert is second of the night 20th of the year Davis is 19th assist on the corner at 14:33. and what a great play by Donnie because coach that ball is so hard to control when it's in the air like that Eber did a great job just to get it on goal much less to the far post exactly and I really thought the ball was a little bit behind him where he had to reach back that is to say the ball was closer to the center line he had to reach back and bring it back into the near to the far post well we're seeing the Don Ebert of old now Carl Rose ahead to Eves outside the penalty area Ebert knocked off the ball by Michaelis three seconds left back to the keeper third quarter is over but the steamers got a big psychological lift at the end of that disastrous third quarter they gave up three to Lee Garcia and Cardenas but Ebert got one late in the period with only 27 seconds left from Ricky Davis and Dave Clemens team is still within shouting distance at 5-4 an exciting fourth quarter is coming up from LA and this is St. Louis steamer soccer watch out when you open a loaf of colonial bread because it's a jungle in there there's a wild animal card in every loaf. Start collecting all 35. Then, want to meet the real thing? You could win a trip for four to Florida's Bush Gardens. Just enter Colonial Zoo Farley Sweepstakes. Look for specially marked packages of Colonial and get a taste for the wildlife. Colonial bread, we got the best right here. Southwestern Bell Telephone wants you to know about push-button phones and touch-tone service. Touch-tone service gives you faster calling and future technology like banking by phone. But not just any push-button phone will give you this convenience. It takes a tone telephone along with touch-tone service from the Southwestern Bell Telephone Network. So if you want touch-tone convenience, make sure you have a tone phone and touch-tone service. And stay in touch. There's not a game in the world quite like it. It is speed, strategy, suspense. If you can face the challenge and take the pressure, look quickly and watch closely as a great American sports tradition gets down to business at Bush Stadium. Swing and a long one! And that's a winner! Cardinal Baseball. The legacy lives on. Order individual or group tickets in person by mail or charge them by phone. Consider the solution to your complicated, confusing financial picture. Anheuser-Busch Employees Credit Union and their powerful daily interest fund, Unlimited. The Unlimited, one productive money management package. It's checking. It's a money market fund. It's a line of credit. Plus, with my cue card, I have access to automatic teller machines all over town. Bring it all together in one complete package. The daily interest fund, Unlimited. The difference will persuade you. <laughs> Fan appreciation out at the arena Saturday night, 7.35. The Steamers and the L.A. Lasers, a free photo album containing action shots of every Steamer player to everyone attending the game. Fan appreciation night, some of the best fans in the league. We think they're the greatest. The Steamers and the L.A. Lasers, game time, 7.35 at the arena on Saturday night. Steamers are averaging just under 14,000 a game this year. They've drawn 321,000. 478 for 23 home dates, an average of 13,977. Second highest total in the league to the Light Wiki's Comets up there in Kansas City who are doing such a fine job with that franchise. What a great Western Division race it's been. And the Steamers with renewed hope because of that goal by Don Ebert looking ahead now to the fourth quarter, trailing 
by a goal. Very simply, one of the most important quarters they'll play. There's the, well, we'll take a look at the third quarter scoring summary. Lee from Garcia, Garcia from Lee, Cardenas from Garcia, Poli Garcia, two assists and a goal in that period, and then Don Ebert, an assist from Ricky Davis at 14.33 to make it interesting again at 5-4. Foul on Tim Walters in midfield. Be careful. Free kick for L.A. Batata tried to cheat about five yards on the restart. Jeff Mantell told him to get back there. Alan Kelly down the board. Stewart Lee touches it inside, and Pesa clears to the midfield. Haven't heard a whole lot from Diego tonight, have we? Diego was, Diego was injured the other night. Stewart Lee pushed off the ball cleanly by Carl Rose on the far side. Batata back on the point to Gus Michaelis. Diego got racked up right at the end of the Kansas City game the other night and was feeling a bit groggy coming into this one. Haven't heard much from Diego tonight. Moving well, though. He, he's running without any limping or anything. He, I asked him before the game how he felt. He said fine. He had a left foot bruise. And, of course, we lost Daryl Duran for a while. And like to wish Daryl all the best. We know he's listening and watching back in St. Louis as well as Steve Petcher. Tony Glavin is not in St. Louis, coming back from knee surgery in Philadelphia today, which was successful, Bill Jennings tells us. Around the boards, Carl Rose knocks it back to Slobo. On the far side, Sammy Vick. Back to Rose. Carl up over the red line. Ty Keo threw ball for Ebert in the right wing. He's got Pesa in front, but he's marked by Michaelis. Ebert trying to turn it away from the boards. Backing in, what's the call? Alan Kelly will be whistled for the foul. And we've got paper airplanes all over the field. Ty Keo centering it off the boards in front. Swept away by Batata. Carl Rose volleys one in. Carl did well just to hit it that hard out of the air, going back over his left shoulder. Knocked in by Keo, back to the keeper. Eber tried to pin the ball against the board, did it to the keeper instead. Since Shermer got to the ball, and they share a little laugh. On the far side, Michaelis. Nice one-two from Batata. Ebert is playing like he's possessed. I mean, he's all over this floor. Yeah, he is fanatical out there right now. Great steal by Davis because of Ebert. Oh, Ricky's knocked down. Yep, it's going to be a penalty. That's what I told you earlier. Earlier in the night, that's not two minutes. The Steamers have gotten so many penalties, Bob. I've seen it happen so many times. The officials compensate the team that's been penalized, and Batata's going to get two minutes. I agree, and really the, pen the penalty should have been called right down here in front of us when Ebert went down and Michaelis kneed him in the head as he went on by. We'll take a timeout. St. Louis power play coming up and a chance to equalize. 5-4 lasers. we got a long way to go. And from L.A., this is Steamer Soccer. This buds to everyone who tackles the changes and challenges of that new promotion. This buds for you. There's no one else who has it quite the way you do. So 